Okay, good evening. It is May 9th, 2023. It is 7 p.m. Welcome to the San Marino Unified School District Board of Education meeting. Here is your board president, Shelley Ryan. Thank you, Dr. Choi. Good evening. I'd like to call the meeting to order. Uh, there was nothing to report in closed session. And now I'd like to call to order, um, do roll call. Mrs. Lamb? Here. Mrs. Gill? Mrs. Chong? Aye. Mr. Chang? Aye. Mrs. Ryan? Aye. Student board member, Ms. Trin? Yeah. And now I'd like to call on um, Dr. Lena Rector to present to us the Pledge of Allegiance. Um, I think we just need to give it a couple minutes, President Ryan. We actually are, are actually waiting for Ms. Gill. Sorry, I oh, think- Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> she oh, she's here now. <laughs> she's, coming to her she's coming to the table right now. Here. <laughs> <laughs> Mrs. Gill, I called roll call. Oh, I, I think there was just oh, here. Yeah. Okay, thank you. All right, Dr. Richter. Thank you, President Ryan. Good evening. Tonight, it is my privilege to welcome and invite one of our amazing San Marino High School Titans to lead the board in the flag salute this evening and share a little bit about San Marino High School. Um, so at this time, I would like to invite Mr. Nicholas Liu, our president of the San Marino speech and debate team. Good evening, board members, uh, Superintendent Dr. De La Torre, and all other guests at the meeting tonight. Uh, my name is Nicholas Liu, and I'm currently a senior at San Marino High School, and next year I will be a student at the University of Southern California. As a San Marino student, I remember my first involvement at school being the treasurer of my fifth grade class, and it definitely helped me in my AP calculus exam yesterday. <laughs> at Huntington Middle School, I participated heavily in the choirs, being a part of Cantate, Vivace, and Bel Canto, and I had the opportunity to be in the State Fair and Footloose musicals. And for the past six years, I've been involved at Huntington Middle School and Tamron High School in the mock trial team. In addition, as many of you might know, I've been a part of the speech and debate team for the past four years. Now, both of these have been my biggest involvements over my time at SMHS, while I've also been a link crew leader helping new freshmen and in the Huntington Humanities Club teaching fellow San Marino Titans about the Huntington Library. Throughout my 13 years in San Marino schools, I have felt the utmost support in every place I pursued my education. And I believe that the person I've become is attributed to San Marino's ability to cultivate learning through community. At a fundamental level, it begins with parents who support us in, their, in our everyday life. For me, it was my parents driving me early in the morning to be a part of K Patrol of fifth grade, helping kindergartners get to their class, and taking hours in my week out of their weekends to judge a speech and debate tournaments. Looking past just our immediate families, um, San Marino teachers and faculty, faculty offer us students unparalleled levels of dedication and curiosity that is ingrained in our learning. From my elementary school teacher, Ms. Ms. Denham and Ms. Domeyer's first grade class, to those I had in high school, like Ms. Dwan in her chemistry and AP biology class, and Mr. Slim's AP government and macroeconomic classes. San Marino teachers are so much more than just teachers who read through curriculums. Instead, they make our learning an experience rather than a chore and allow us to discover what we want to continue learning while supporting us in these ventures. Then, in the wide scope of our city, other members of our community continue to support all of us at the schools with events like the Carver Carnival, Valentine Fair, Huntington Breakfast, and Annual High School Musical. The San Marino community consistently shows up to donate and contribute to the educational experiences of our students. Most importantly, it's those, of you, it's those of you sitting on the board of education who care so deeply about us students receiving a good education that you spend so much time facilitating our day-to-day -day learning. As San Marino students, our biggest supporters are not just our friends and family, but neighbors, <clears throat> teachers, and other community members as well. And that, that's what I believe makes San Marino special. I hope to return to San Marino one day, <clears throat> but this time it's a supporter, not just a student. Thank you. Thank you. 
Uh, now, will everyone please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge of allegiance, allegiance to the flag, flag of the United States of America, States of America and to the republic, to the republic for which, which it stands, stands one, one nation, nation under God, God indivisible, indivisible with liberty and justice, and justice for, all. for all. Please be seated. Thank you. Nick, uh, oh, President Ryan, we're going to be presenting um, Nicholas with a certificate of appreciation. And in your absence, I'm going to ask that uh, C. Joseph Chang, Vice President, uh, come up and help me present this certificate. Nick. Thank you. Thank you so much. Incredible job on speaking today, and this gave our high school so much better. Um, and it would be without you and fight on. <laughs> <laughs> okay, great choice. We still love <laughs> Okay, President Ryan, back to you. Thank you, Dr. Delatory. Thank you, Mr. Chang, and thank you so much, Nicholas. Next, we need approval for the agenda. Do I have a motion to approve the agenda? I move to approve the agenda. Agenda. This is Jane. I thank second. you, Mrs. Chung. I second, Francesca Gill. Thank you, Mrs. Gill. And with that, I will do a roll call. Mrs. Lamb. Aye. Mrs. Gill. Aye. Mrs. Chong. Aye. Mr. Chang. Aye. Mrs. Ryan, aye. And our student board member. Yes. Thank you. Next, I need the approval of the minutes for April 25th, 2023, the Board of Education meeting minutes. Do I have a motion? I, this is Jane. I move to approve the minutes with a couple of corrections. Um, the mo the motion in 6B was seconded by Ms. Gill, and then there is a typo in my name in 12A. So with that, I, with those corrections, and I have let Ms. Delatori know, um, I move to approve the minutes. Thank you, Mrs. Chan, with those corrections. Do I have a second for that? I second with the corrections. Thank you, Mrs. Gill. And with that, I'll do roll call. Mrs. Lamb? Aye. Mrs. Gill? Aye. Mrs. Chan? Aye. Mr. Chang? Aye. Mrs. Ryan? Aye. Student board member, Ms. Trin? Um, I wasn't here last week, so. Stain. Stain. Okay, so you've abstained. Thank you. All right, next we have the San Reno Unified School District Spotlight. At this time, the Board of Education would like to recognize our student board member, Ms. Kelly Trin. I'd like to turn it over to Dr. Linda Delatory, our superintendent. Yes, thank you so much. And I am going to turn it over to our high school principal, Mr. Kurtenbach. Thank you, President Ryan. Hello, uh, members of the board and Superintendent Dr. De La Torre. We're here tonight to honor our first ever state championship eSports League team. Uh, for those of you who don't know what eSports are, um, it's basically playing online video games against other teams. Um, now, we have had an eSports team uh, for, for several years. We had one through COVID as well. Um, probably one of the few sports who could actually compete during COVID without too much um, uh, uh, change to what they usually do. Uh, and this year, Mr. David Basulto, our media arts teacher, took over the team. 
and uh, quickly launched them into the stratosphere. I actually got to watch a portion of their last game, um, and uh, I was actually pretty excited to know that I knew what was happening, thanks to my own son, um, as the team defeated uh, their, their rivals in League of Legends. Um, I'm going to ask our, our four teammates to come up here as well and give us a little bit um, more insight into how they play their games. As much as I do know, um, I'm actually quite ignorant because as my son uh, always says, you, he sends me down the middle, I die, and then he does <laughs> other things to help me. Uh, so uh, gentlemen, could you please come up here and uh, we'll ask you to speak a little bit about your experience this year. All right. Um, hello, everyone. My name is Nathan Tang, and I am the I'm a senior here at Samuel High School, and I am the League of Legends varsity team captain and the manager of esports. Um, unfortunately, Mr. B was unable to make it here, so I will be speaking on his behalf. Um, when I first joined esports, the club was small but still very fun. With with the help of our teacher, Mr. B, we were able to grow the club and triple the number triple the number amount of players and increase the the passion throughout all of our players. Mr. B has been an incredible mentor to us and has helped us become the best team that we can be. One of the amazing things that that he has helped us um, help that he has helped us with was the feeling of being a team, and he provided this these amazing jerseys that. Um, Mr. B purchased out of his pocket for us. These jerseys have not only pop been popular inside the club, but many staff members like Mr. Kernerbach has <laughs> worn these jerseys too. They've, they've really helped us to feel like a connected group and have motivated us to play our best. Currently, we are competing in a, in, in a couple of games titles, game titles such as League of Legends and Valorant. But in the next year, we plan to expand the esports club by introducing other games too, um, so that we can be a more so that we can be more inclusive with what our players want. Our esports club is only growing to is only going to grow in the next few years, and we are excited to see where that will or where that will take the club. Now, let me tell you about what we do in esports. We have a fall season and a spring season, and we have weekly games uh, up until playoffs. Amongst our competitive teams, we often scout our opponents. We create strategies to build off of our strengths and um, break down the enemy's weaknesses, which we will bring into the games usually. Um, esports is not only fun inside the game, but also outside the game as a, um, yeah, sorry, yeah. These methods allowed us to have a very successful season with a seven, one, seven win and one loss record. In the playoffs, we were able to beat some very challenging teams uh, that, that made it really close because they put up a fight. They put up a true fight. But we were able to beat them because of our synergy and unification as a team. Mr. B contributed to our success by purchasing several co professional coaching sessions for our competitive teams, which provided us with valuable insight. Overall, our esports club is a phenomenal way for students and gamers alike to create new bonds, connect with others, and compete against other schools. We have plenty of players who want to play recreationally with a pre-made group of friends, and we also have players who want to play competitively, like us. Um, esports is made for anyone who is interested regardless of skill and experience. I want to end off by saying that our esports program here has brought us so much joy and excitement to our school, and we are proud to be part of it. Thank you. Wow, thank you for that. Go ahead, Dr. Delatore. Thank you, President Ryan. Um, if I could just get see Joseph Chang, our vice president, to come up. We're gonna present you with a certificate of recognition for your participation and for playing first in the state of the team. So congratulations, gentlemen. We're very proud of you. Okay, I can get one more with the entire board if you don't mind. Can you join us? Love to. You guys should invite the group. Yeah, you guys are invited. 
You guys should shouldn't play against them. <laughs> You got a new team already lined up. Well, yeah. I I've never played. You should do an executive team do executive management. Yeah. You should play up the green trees. Yeah. yeah. Okay. You never okay. <laughs> Let's do it. And President Ryan, I think we need to go back to uh, another number A. Yes, number A. Um, no. Thank you. Um, and did I hear a match uh, struck up there? <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, a very oh, exciting. Esports is one of the fastest growing sports around. So thank you for presenting that. I'd like to go back to 7A. At this time, the Board of Education would like to recognize our student board member, Ms. Kelly Trin, and I'd like to turn it over to Dr. Linda Delatori. Don't turn it away again, Linda. <laughs> thank you, President Ryan, I won't. <laughs> so thank you so much, um, Kelly. We would like to appreciate and acknowledge your service and support to the Board of Education this year as our student board member. We have a board member recognition that we're gonna be presenting you with tonight. And I just like to read it to you. Resolution for service to the San Marino Unified School District as a student board member. Whereas Kelly Trin has served as student board member during the 2022-23 school year. And whereas Kelly Trin has made a unique and significant contribution to the deliberations of the Board of Education through her participation. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Board of Education of the San Marino Unified School District commends and extends appreciation to student board member Kelly Trent. And Kelly, we'd like you to come up to the center with the rest of the board. And I know you are very busy in your senior year, Kelly. Um, and I know it's, a, it's just a lot of um, work and commitments for you to be here on Tuesday evening to support the board. So thank you for um, making that commitment. I'm AP. Thank you so much. Five APs in badminton and student board member. Wow, amazing, truly incredible. Congratulations. Thank you. Back to you, President Ryan. Thank you. Next, at this time, it is my pleasure to introduce to you uh, a guest that we have with us today. Uh, her name is Miss Erica Nam, and she is from the office of Senator Anthony Portentino. I met um, Miss Nam last week. Uh, she reached out to me, and she also had the pleasure of meeting Mr. Chang. Um, at a tree planting ceremony in, at Lacey Park. But what struck me about this young lady was that um, she wanted to get to know our community and she wanted to reach out just to see how um, she could uh, work with us through uh, Senator Anthony Portentino's office. Thank you and welcome Ms. Nam. Thank you so much. Um, if I can just briefly just introduce myself uh, my name is Erica Nam. Um, I wanted to first thank um, President Ryan for allowing me to formally introduce myself and just that 
introduction was awesome. Um, I just wanted to note for um, that I am the new district representative for State Senator Anthony Portentino, and I will be representing San Marino. Um, more importantly, I also want to focus on the API issues and the outreach efforts within the district area. Tomorrow is actually my one month anniversary with the office. Um, I feel like time is going by. Um, nonetheless, I'm very excited to be here and I look forward to strengthening the positive relationship between our office and the community. And more importantly, I really want to learn how I can assist with any concerns um, you may have surrounding various topics. So if you have any questions and would like to connect, I can leave my um, work email and President Ryan does have my working email. So um, thank you so much. And I hope that I can meet you all in person soon. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Erica. All right, next we have, uh, thank you so much for coming. And next we have public comment. The Board of Education has adopted board policy 9323B to ensure the public's right to be heard in any matters pertaining to the San Marino Unified School District. Persons who wish to provide public comment will have three options to submit public comment. First, you may submit through an online form, request to speak during the meeting via Zoom, or request to speak during the meeting in person via the public comment card. At 3.30 this afternoon, there were no comments made um, online form. And right now, is there anyone requesting to speak? Yes, there is. Okay. Um, Vice President Chang is sorting. Uh, Board President, uh, so far we collect the three uh, public comment in person. Okay, so, but we go to Zoom first. Okay. All right, that's number two. Stephen, is there anyone in Zoom requesting yes. to speak? If we could give a one minute timer. Okay, we are pausing for a minute to take requests to speak regarding matters that are not on the agenda or items that are in the consent information uh, sections. Uh, if you'd like to make a request to speak, uh, go ahead and press the raise hand icon or dial star nine. Thirty seconds remaining. If you'd like to make a request to speak, please press the raise hand icon or dial star nine. Okay, there are no requests to speak via Zoom. Thank you, uh, Dr. Choi. Mr. Chang, I'm gonna turn it over to you. Thank you. Uh, with uh, Paul uh, Ryan uh, pre uh, permission, so I um, uh, introduce uh, sorry, uh, public comment in person. Uh, first two, uh, they are come from the San Marino Rotary Club. Uh, first one is a uh, beer pen. And the second one is uh, Jesse Hong. So please come to the podium. Uh, tonight they are coming to talk about the uh, uh, rotary mini ground. Oh. Thank you. So uh, I'm here representing the Rotary Club of San Marino. On behalf of the Rotary Club, I'm here to present a mini grant check of $33,385. Thank you. Uh, before I proceed, I just wanted to, uh, uh, on behalf of the, the club, tell uh, to speak to the board and the school district that we appreciate all the things you have done for our students. And as you know, many of the members of San Marino Rotary Club have uh, kids or they have kids in the past that attended our school district. And that's why 
there were very well-meaning uh, members of our club that had designated certain funds to be given to the uh, school district. And this year we're very fortunate because the stock market did pretty well. <laughs> so we're able to contribute and donate this money. Uh, the money generally is given in the past is given to teachers specifically for those teachers who have submitted proposal uh, for creative or innovative teaching uh, methods or uh, special projects. But I think it's beginning last year or two years ago, we decided to just lump all the money together give it to the school district. Although, uh, and I probably need to give this to Dr. Dr. Del Torre as well. <laughs> there are certain funds that are designated for each school. And so then you can distribute them accordingly. Yes. But in any event, uh, here's the check and I need to take a picture. So I have evidence yes. <laughs> <laughs> that I delivered the check to you, CEO. Picture as well. Um, Mr. Chang, if you'd like to join me, please. And Mr. Payne, yeah. if you'd like to come up. And I will turn it over to Dr. Lin, <laughs> <laughs> our money man. Uh, yeah. 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 Yes. Yeah. Yes. Madam Superintendent and uh, school board members, uh, since the uh, 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 William Devereaux book uh, came out and he spoke with both Rotary and City Club, uh, while I was not in town in 1949, uh, my wife uh, was a classmate uh, of the Fiscus older daughter. So this has really been uh, an issue that we've been interested in. So after the uh, Devereaux, uh, Devereaux talk, uh, I had never seen the location of the plaque or read the plaque. But I was in the area yesterday, uh, decided to take a couple of minutes, try to find it on the softball field, and it did take a little time to locate it. And then I tried to read it, and you can see from the picture, now your eyes uh, are younger than mine, but I had difficulty reading that plaque. The plaque uh, uh, was, in, uh, was put up in 1999, the 50th year anniversary of Kathy Fiscus, Fiscus's passing. Uh, and it identifies four groups that participated and I assume that in participation that meant financially, but I have no records to know what the participation exactly was and meant. Uh, so it's the city of San Marino, the Rotary Club of San Marino, San Marino City Club, and the Historical uh, Society. Uh, the Historical Society uh, knows that this is, uh, or, or recommends, also recommends that this be a formal project to replace uh, an unreadable plaque on the high school campus. Um, Rotary has a board, City Club has a board, and um, whether we need the city's reparticipation or not is a decision we can all make. But uh, my recommendation, uh, my hope, my dream, would be that the school district as yes. currently uh, constituted would agree uh, that number one, this plaque ought to be re replaced. And number two, now that the Deverell book has come out and Deverell uh, took issue at if the location was to be 
an approximation of where Kathy actually died, this is not the right location. The right location uh, after he found the water company records, superimposed them on the existing high school campus. The location happens to be west of the uh, end zone of the football stadium, uh, probably somewhere between the end zone and the track. And uh, uh, I need to revisit that because I, in my own mind, can't picture exactly where that would be. But with Deverell's help, we may be able to pinpoint it if that's a location acceptable to the school district, to the high school, to the athletic programs, to safety, the whole schmear. So um, I, I don't have any records of what was done uh, before. Ken Veranda, who was the Rotary president, is deceased. He was one of the few presidents of Rotary that didn't write a write-up of the things that happened his year. So the only records uh, may be with the school district, but they are somewhat distant. So they may have been round filed by this time. And uh, I don't know if the city keeps records this long, they may also uh, not be available. So maybe we're starting fresh. Uh, so uh, I have agreed to fundraise uh, for the different organizations, uh, but uh, I'm, I'm not the school union, I'm not the school maintenance, you all are. And uh, so I, I'm, I'm hoping I, that number one, you might think this is the right time and, and the right thing to do, and that we would form some sort of a committee to move forward. That's my, that's my hope, thank you. Thank you for Mr. Penn for sharing uh, this story with, with us. Yeah, we will bring to the poll for discussion, yeah. Uh, next one, uh, third person, uh, public comment, uh, that's uh, Jason uh, Curtin Bach. Uh, topic is a uh, boy uh, baseball CIF quarter final. I'm, I'm actually going to extend that. First of all, you got to thank the boys. Uh, they actually won again against Alhambra, seven to two. Uh, and they're going to be playing this Friday at San Marino High School. Everybody's going to show up for at least a moment to cheer them on uh, at 315. This is the CIF quarterfinals. We're playing Campbell School. Badminton also plays tomorrow at Roland at 430. That's the CIF semifinals. SMHS Boys Golf made CIF in both team and individuals. Tomorrow, Ryan Toe and Kingston Cow will play as the individuals up at Los Robles Greens. And then on Friday, or excuse me, next Monday, uh, the team plays at the Victoria course at River Ridge in Oxnard. And finally, uh, not to be outdone, swimming will also compete this Friday in CIF with Amber Paul, Daniel Lee, who broke a state record uh, with Harry Somers, Otis Sai, and uh, Liam Thomas swimming for the Titans in CIF. So we are firing on all cylinders academically and athletically. And uh, it's all thanks to the hardworking coaches and the students that we have. And I just wanted to say that. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, thank you for principal leadership. Thank you so much, Jason. And for those of you guys uh, turning in, um, it, the, these are the items. Um, for public comment that's not on the agenda. And next I would like to go to number nine, which is our public hearing. At this time, I would like to turn it over to Dr. Jason Rose, who will conduct the public hearing. Thank you, President Ryan. Uh, tonight, the Board of Education will pause the board meeting to conduct a public hearing and take public comment on the 2023-2024 District Sunshine proposal for contract negotiations between the San Marino Unified School District and the California School Employees Association, CSEA, uh, Chapter 120. Copies of the District Sunshine proposal for contract negotiations between the San Marino Unified School District and the California School Employees Association, CSEA Chapter 120, were made available for public view at the April 25th board meeting and are currently available at the back of the room for review. Uh, so Dr. Choi, can we please pause the meeting for one minute to take public comment? Thank you, Dr. Rose. We are currently paused. If you'd like to make a request to speak, please press the raise hand icon or dial star nine.
Okay, we have no requests. That's it. Thank you, Dr. Ryan, or President Ryan. Thank you, Dr. Rose. All right, number 10 is our consent section. Do I have a motion to approve the consent section? A through F? I'll make the motion. Second. Uh, thank you, Mrs. Gill. Do I have a second? I, I second. Thank you, Mr. Chang. And with that, a roll call. Ms. Lamb? Aye. Mrs. Gill? Aye. Mrs. Chong? Aye. Mr. Chang? Aye. Mrs. Ryan, I, student board member, Ms. Trin. Yes. Thank you. Motion has passed for the consent section. Next under the communication section, 11A, communication from the board of education. We ask that each board member take two, no more than three minutes to share their communication so that we may hear about your many activities. Let's begin with Ms. Lamb. Um, I'd actually like to take the opportunity to highlight uh, Teacher Appreciation Week, which was just last week. Um, our educators are the pillar of our school district. Their reach to our students goes beyond the classroom and we're so appreciative of all of their efforts um, in and out of it. Uh, throughout Teacher Appreciation Week, there were various um, functions and events to honor their contributions and including student activities and luncheons and little care and gift packages, um, which is really just a token of appreciation for all that they've done. So um, I just wanted to thank all the contributions they've made to our student and our school district. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Lamb. Mrs. Gill. Um, I definitely second um, Mrs. Lamb's appreciation for our staff and teachers. And I personally attended um, a few, quite a few uh, Diane salad lunches <laughs> this past week. They are always delicious, even if you have them four days in a row. <laughs> um, so uh, I know a lot of people in the district are working very hard on the upcoming graduations and promotions. And um, I personally am heading up um, with a committee, the eighth grade graduation and the fifth grade at Valentine. And so we've been all working overtime, um, trying to make it special for our students. Um, additionally, I attended the San Marino Schools Foundation uh, donor party, um, which was just a lovely affair where they showered the donors with appreciation with the beautiful um, hanging umbrella decorations. It was just really nice to see so much support for our schools. Thank you, Mrs. Gill. Mrs. Chong. Thank you. Um, I also had Diane salad quite a few times and enjoyed <laughs> it very much. So thank you. Uh, Dr. Rose for for serving our staff um, multiple times throughout the week. I hope you had your fill of Diane salad and zucchini bread. They have other salads. <laughs> we did have other salads, but the, none of them were district hand tossed like that. <laughs> so thank you, and thank you to um, Dr. Delatore and the staff for just demonstrating our appreciation to our sites. Um, it's the little things. It's the infinitesimal tiny steps that matter. Um, if, if you die by death by a thousand cuts, I, whatever the opposite of that would be is what we want to kill with kindness with everyone else. Um, so I hope they felt appreciated. Uh, also attended um, a couple of celebrations at Valentine May Day. First time seeing that. Incredibly fun to see our own board member even um, sword fighting with um, <laughs> on the field. Um, attended the Carver Patriotic Program and uh, the donor party as well for the foundation. Wonderful event at the single house. Um, again, so appreciative of always offering that home to us. Uh, today attended the PTA Council Installation Luncheon, where we honored the people who will be coming in and stepping up for next year. And so, um, so appreciative always of people saying yes. 
And I think for me, the high, oh, I will say two things. Um, the highlight for me was probably the basketball game at the high school last week. Uh, just so much fun. Great, great school spirit in that gymnasium. Um, and whether you're cheering for the teachers or the students. Uh, and I think that was really fun to watch. And then in terms of myself, one other activity I wanted to report out was my work with the facility advisory committee. Uh, with President Ryan, we uh, had a meeting with uh, Joy Coomer regarding our options and timelines for the bond feasibility study. And then we also had a facility advisory committee meeting where we talked about the architect, which we'll more hear about later, and also went through the facility design process with Chris Nolan. And that was very informative for our committee. I think we're continuing to make some really good progress on that work. Thank you, Mrs. Chong. Mr. Chang. Uh, one more time, I, I like to uh, appreciate uh, district administrator uh, host uh, for school sign uh, appreciation uh, lunch. Uh, I attend the Valentine uh, section. And uh, uh, April 26, uh, I also attend the uh, Samanina High School internship and uh, volunteer uh, fair. Uh, I see the, so many uh, familiar uh, faces. Yeah. They are working in the local uh, the community organization. And uh, May 4, I also attend the education committee for Huntington Medical Research Institute. So we are talking about the high school uh, internship and the uh, college uh, intern and also uh, postdoc. So I hope the, uh, the, they are can uh, also uh, accept for the Samarino High School student. And then uh, May 5th, uh, I attend the uh, Carver uh, Patriotic uh, Council. Uh, it's a wonderful uh, music program. That's it. Thank you, Mr. Chang. On my report, April 26th, um, as Mrs. Chong reported, I attended the feasibility meeting regarding the bond. Uh, thank you so much for your attendance, Mrs. Sean. On the 26th, I also attended the San Marino Schools Foundation board meeting. Thank you so much for hosting a wonderful foundation party for our donors on 429. It was well attended and it was a wonderful event for both uh, parents and students. On April 27th, I attended the FAC. And then on the 30th of April, uh, what a delight to attend the Music in the Parlor hosted by the Michael White Adobe Group who um, had a soprano, uh, uh, Teresa Sakpakis' sis, uh, sister. And it was just a wonderful um, afternoon of music and song. A uh, happy, happy Principal's Day last week, as well as thanking our administrative team led by Dr. Linda Della Torre and Dr. Rose and Dr. Lena Rector on joining all of us in uh, a week long celebration of our faculty and staff. All right, next up is our student uh, board member, Ms. Trin. Well, some things that were not already mentioned yet. Carver, Valentine, and Huntington had their cast testing in this past week. It was English, math, and science. And for Carver, after they finished their testing, all the teachers gave their students a little brain breaks. An, exam an example of that is one fourth grade class got to make a chain reaction machine throughout the whole entire classroom. And the pictures of it were really funny. Um, while Valentine had some informational tips and tricks, she posted on their newsletter so the student can read about it and prepare for their um, cast testing. Um, the enrichment team had their last final sale on May 2nd, and because of them, parents were able to support Carver and their local restaurants by buying gift cards. Um, Huntington, on, on April 28th, the sixth graders had their last dance of the school year, and the theme was Candyland. On April, starting on April 19th through May 1st, sixth and seventh graders were, were, be, were able to select their elective. So elective registration opened for them. Um, 
on May 5th, the eighth graders took their annual trip to Magic Mountain, which I saw some pictures online and they all looked really fun. In Sacramento High, on May 1st, students began the week filled with AP testing, starting out with AP Gov and in the morning and AP Chem in the afternoon. For the junior jumpstart, this year they began submitting the organization tool earlier. So last year it was due by the beginning of senior year, but this year it's due on the 17th of this month. So now juniors are expected to work on their common app essays and PIQ over the summer. So that'll probably give them more time to review essays with counselors and teachers during the school year before submitting it. So I think that that's a really big jump and that's a good thing. A good change. And one thing Mr. Kernbach forgot to mention is Kayla Giddings and sophomore Kayla Giddings and senior Ben Hughes qualify for the CIF division finals. So they'll be competing this Saturday at Moore Park High School. And um, this is just something Megan Choa will be the next 2023 to 2024 student board representative. She had been on ASB for many years and she has multiple years of experience. Um, she has been recognized at the student board meeting before, so you'd seen her. She was a part of dance company. So she, and this year she is ICC, so she has a lot of experience. And for um, the student report, this, this time I took some reports from San Diego High School students in preparation for the AP testing. Here are the following things students and teachers prepared for. So Mrs. Davidson, AP language and composition class, the students wrote their one final pop essay the week before the test. And the most the prompt for the most recent pop essay was to evaluate a quote on whether you disagree or disagree about a quote from Voltaire's view of oppression. And it reads, it's dangerous to be right in matters about which the established authorities are wrong. And the student, I asked the student how they felt about that. And they said they were able to reflect on the hierarchy of society after writing uh, an essay in 40 minutes. <laughs> And AP Gov and politics students focus on MCPQ practice and FRQ practice in AP classroom. I asked the students what they thought of it. And they said they don't really feel like AP classroom is that helpful, which makes sense because AP, the AP testing is scored based on how well you do against other students. And since everybody in the AP course has access to that materials, they probably don't feel as prepared or as as like they don't feel like they have an advantage against students from other schools so I asked them what they did to study instead and they said they used outside resources like Heimer's history which it's it's accessible to all students but not all students know about this amazing like YouTube channel that like gives them a really condensed version of everything they need to know outside of academics intermediate art is working on a sustained investigation I asked the students what they were doing and they said a sustained investigation is where they create three pieces of art centered, at, uh, centered around one topic. So an example would be this student chose um, mythical creatures from, uh, from the forest and her pieces, one of the pieces that she's currently working on is the clay sculptures of frogs. And she really focuses on the anatomy of frogs so she can go into like details about how the frog actually looks like instead of just like a cartoon version of it. And she says art makes her feel excited to come to school every day since it's her very first period in the morning. Mm -hmm. Nice. And that's all. That's great. Thank, Thank you. So, Kerry, is that this uh, your last meeting or you will join us the next one? Maybe I, I can <laughs> join you next meeting. But I was also thinking of getting Megan to join the last meeting, <laughs> to do one meeting right before the Aaron, I can't be here. <laughs> I probably still have to ask Megan about it. She's been gone for AB testing a lot. So it's like I've been gone and then she's been gone. So I'll probably let uh, Mrs. Delatory know if I will be attending or who will be attending the next meeting. Thank you. Thank you for We'll miss you. All right. All right. Well, I, I hope you're able to come back for the next meeting, but I just want to thank you on behalf of the school board. Um, it's been just delightful having you on the board and you met our, my challenge to you, which was to re, uh, report more on student voices. And so you did that fabulously, especially tonight. And thank you so much for that. Um, I, want, I want to hear one minute more from you. And that is, what are your plans now for the next year? Um, 
I think my plan for the next year is to survive the East Coast. It'll <laughs> <laughs> definitely be a change. I'm going to be attending Bucknell University, and it's all the way in the middle of nowhere in Pennsylvania. <laughs> and it's going to be really different when you can't just drive around and get food and you have no car. <laughs> and it's going to be like their summer is our winter, and their winter is like <laughs> below zero or something. So it's going to be a big change. Um, other than that, I don't know. I'm planning on, I I obviously working with Posse. So I think the first year is just focusing on academics first. Maybe after the first year, I'll be start. I'll start. I'll start looking into uh, my school study abroad program and internships. My um Posse offers me. That sounds great. Yeah. Well, congratulations and and get all your warm gear ready then. <laughs> yeah. All right, we look forward to hearing from you. You'll be back around the holidays, right? Yep. All right. So you'll be able to attend a board meeting then. <laughs> <laughs> or when you get lonely, you can just call in. <laughs> All right. Um, next communication from our uh, superintendent, Dr. Linda Delatory. Thank you, Madam President and members of the Board of Education executive team. Um, May happens to be the Asian American and Native Hawaiian Pacific Islander Heritage Month. And so I did send a communication out to the community on that this week. Was it yesterday? My days are running together. Um, and so I just want to acknowledge that. And it's a wonderful opportunity to really immerse yourself in the culture and really learn more about um, the, the dynamic um, arts, education, history related to uh, AANHPI heritage, um, which is so much a part of our community in San Marino. And I just think it's a, it's a wonderful opportunity for us to really um, honor that heritage and acknowledge the many significant contributions um, that that um, culture has made to our history in the United States. Also, it happens to be Mental Health Awareness Month. So we are going to be sending out some materials on mental health, and you're going to hear a little bit more about that uh, later on this evening um, as to what specifically we are doing in San Marino Unified School District um, to support the mental health and well-being of all of our students, which is uh, becoming increasingly more important as we move forward. Um, also, we have a wonderful and unique opportunity to strengthen the partnership that we have with Chinatown Service Center uh, through the connection um, that uh, C. Joseph Chang has provided us. Um, we have um, our counselors, psychologists, and administrators are going to be meeting with them uh, to discuss a potential opportunity to apply for a grant that will support a program that is more proactive to mental health and well-being as opposed to being reactive. So we're doing a great job responding to and reacting to uh, students in crisis. Um, and we're wondering if we can't put something together that's really remarkable on uh, preventing mental health crises from occurring in the first place. So we're gonna be working on that. I also want to say um, that I'm very pleased to announce that the fencing project is coming coming along quite nicely at Huntington Middle School. So I expect to see a big smile on the principal's face this evening. He's been waiting a long time for this to happen. The panels are finally here and uh, finally being put up. So as soon as that's done, we're gonna start working on the, the back of the campus and uh, we are, uh, are gonna complete that project um, if it kills us by the end of this year. <laughs> And when I say year, I'm not committing to the end of the school year. I mean calendar year. No, I'm just kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. So <laughs> there he goes. All right. So uh, safety is important to us and the mental uh, health and well-being of all of our students is, is super important to us. And so you're going to be hearing a lot more from the school district on those two subjects. And now I'll turn it back over to our president, Ryan. Thank you, Dr. Delatory. And um, communi um Next up, we have information item, and I want to remind the board that this is information only. At this time, I'd like to turn it over to our smiling principal, uh, Mr. Tepolian, for an update on the HMS Wellness Center. Oh, look at that. Nice. All right. What, was that a compliment to me or to the slide? <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> to you, Daryl. <laughs> oh, thank you. Well, good evening, uh, board members, President Ryan, superintendent, executive team. It is my pleasure to just bring you an update that you've asked for, which we're excited to present to you about our wellness center and something that our superintendent mentioned um, is our wellness center really is a place that it's not a place that's reactionary. It's a place where we're proactive and we're being preventative. It's a place where our students feel welcome and they have a place to go uh, before a crisis develops or maybe a situation they're dealing with, but they learn the skills and the coping mechanisms to get through that. And that is really out of the vision of of an amazing individual I'm gonna to introduce to you. We are so blessed with June Gonzalez. I think for myself as a former school counselor, but I know that Dr. Lynn has worked with June, uh, President Curtin, I mean, President. Hey, I just made you President uh, Curtin Bach. Dr. President. Uh, Dr. Yeah. President uh, well, I don't know where he went, but Principal Curtin Bach has worked with June. She has just a wealth of knowledge. And, and you, when you tap into June and her experience and her professionalism, on the wellness center of just a whole is on our campus. You can see that uh, when you walk in not only, not only into the wellness lounge now, but also into our library because it's it's grown. That space has grown. And so we've had to extend that. And where you've seen that is you now see that in a library where it's a theme where our kids can go and feel safe. And that's that's unique for a middle school because it is such a trying time. If you all think back to the time when you're in middle school, what that's like, but to have a place where kids feel safe to go to, to deal with something that they're dealing with and to talk with somebody or just talk amongst themselves, uh, June's created that kind of environment. So I'm going to really turn over to June. This is her, this is her wheelhouse. This is an amazing individual. So um, June Gonzalez, our school counselor. Okay. Well, good evening, members of the San Marino Unified School Board. School Board, My name is June Gonzalez, and I'm going on my 17th year at Huntington Middle School as a school's counselor. Tonight, I'm excited to share with you on the progress of our long-awaited wellness projects and uh, that we were able to bring to fruition from generous donors and grants. In my presentation, I will be giving you an update on the wellness lounge that is providing wellness services to our students, as well as new projects that we have implemented this school year. Oops, go back. There we go. Uh, before I begin, I would like to introduce our 2022-23 wellness team. This is an amazing group of professionals who have been providing care, guidance, and wellness to our students throughout the school year. We have our San Marino High School Titan Wellness Supervising Clinician and Coordinator, Tanya L. Hindi, Vivi Jen, our wellness technician serving both the San Marino High School and Huntington Middle School campus. We have myself, our associate MFT, Pei Jen Chen, and our amazing team of dedicated interns, which include Meredith, Sarah, Yudia, Bethany, Jesse and our school psychologist, Betsy. I'm sorry, our school psychologist intern, Betsy. Okay. Our wellness lounge is open Monday through Friday from 8 to 4 p.m. for counseling services. When available, we also offer occasional after-school social-emotional counseling and wellness groups, which meet from 3 to 4 p.m. and are facilitated by our wonderful interns. Tuesday through Friday, the Wellness Lounge is open for student walk-ins from 1220 to 1 o'clock, which is during their lunch break. Also, outside of the Wellness Lounge hours, my counseling office is always open for students during the school day for any student who would like to walk in for counseling support or guidance or is referred by a, a staff member or teacher. The Wellness Lounge opens its doors in late spring after converting a classroom into a wellness space for our students. The goal of the space was to bring the calming and relaxing elements of the outdoors with the sights, sounds, and textures that are found in nature. This space includes an oversized screen with visuals and sounds of waterfalls, creeks, singing birds, seascapes, or any version of nature that we would like to bring into the space to set the tone for a Zen experience. The room is also furnished with comfortable and fun campfire style seating so students can truly sit back and relax. 
The wellness space also includes therapy tables where students can meet with their wellness counselor or just enjoy the benefits of using their creativity as part of their Zen experience. There are relaxing and therapeutic activities such as synergy chimes and a singing bowl, Zen sand trays to relieve stress, laptop kinetic sand trays to provide sensory processing and create calm, frosted glass partition marker boards to leave positive and uplifting messages, and of course, supplies to journal, sketch, color, all is a part of their art therapy. We also have individual and small group table games, origami kits, puzzles, and a variety of fidgets to help with self-regulation. What makes this space student-centered is um, and conducive for counseling are that there are varied seating options, whether choosing to sit on the floor, choosing one of our yoga mats or meditation mats, or one of our lounge recliners, cafe tables, or banquette seating area, it gives students a break from the typical classroom seating and an opportunity to lounge and relax. Our wellness interns provide school-based counseling services in the wellness lounge during school hours. We have a detailed calendaring system, which helps in scheduling the numerous sessions. Students who do not have scheduled counseling appointments um, also have the opportunity to walk into the wellness lounge for services. This year, we created what we call wellness time for our students, and we called it our Zen Zone Hangout. The Zen Zone Hangout is a peaceful, calm, and quiet retreat where students can drop in and relax and de-stress at lunch. A wellness intern, our wellness technician, or myself supervises the hangout. Students can participate in optional mindfulness activities such as breathing exercises, meditation and yoga, as well as activities that reduce stress and increase calm. Students are welcome to bring their own books in for pleasure reading, although we all are very well stocked with a variety of teen wellness magazines. Students are, however, discouraged from bringing their Chromebook, schoolwork, cell phones, or anything else that will distract them from taking a much needed mental break. Instead, students are encouraged to participate in the many wellness activities we offer so they can replenish their mental and physical state before returning to the classroom. This year, <clears throat> I wanted to focus on a new project that would extend wellness opportunities for students beyond the lounge and the counseling office. As educators and parents, we know that it's difficult for students to focus on school if they are experiencing stress or anxiety. These emotional responses do affect their schoolwork, their relationship with peers and teachers, decision-making, and often how well they do or do not do in school. For this reason, I wanted to make sure that students had access to wellness throughout the school day from a variety of locations on campus. Research suggests that mindfulness practices help students to manage their stress more effectively. It can improve cognitive performance, as well as resilience to stress and anxiety. These practices do not have to be long, long or drawn out activities. In fact, frequent micro sessions for just a few minutes can impart major health benefits. With that in mind, and after many hours of research exploring innovative ways to deliver the practice of mindfulness, I ran across an effective practice or concept that is trending in Europe and in Australia. Um, in Europe and Australia, uh, they are having companies, universities, and public spaces providing respite from everyday stressors by using pods for wellness. Our wellness project called Peace in a Pod involves using a pod to give students a semi-private, comfortable space uh, for learning mindfulness opportunities and to practice them through the use of an iPad, which is embedded with wellness programs and noise-canceling headphones. The iPad offers no Wi-Fi connection or downloaded features, so the student's sole focus is on wellness. Students check out the equipment from our library desk or wellness desk. Here are some examples of wellness pods being used in workplaces, universities, and public spaces. The innovators of Calm, the relaxa relaxation app, even designed their own portable pods as well as companies like Headspace and WellPod. Forbes magazine in their 2022 issue looked at post-pandemic workplace shifts and they saw that their uh, shift needs to take place, including rethinking and incorporating wellness into the workplace and in schools. They are not alone. 
Our wellness project, project Peace in a Pod, focuses on the use of mindfulness pod for students to comfortably nestle in with their iPad filled with immersive experiences. This is the home page. So this is an example of, of, of what it looks like. And the options for experiences include breathing practices, building gratitude, sound baths to reduce stress and tension, guided meditations, taking, a vir taking in the virtual outdoors, developing coping strategies, creating inner calm through art and self-regulation practices. And with over 100 wellness experiences uploaded, a student does not have to repeat the same experience twi twice unless they choose to go back. We have two pods located in our library, which is one of our most used space by students, both during and after school and one pod in our wellness lounge. Here is an example of a relaxed breathing experience on the iPad. Uh, before students engage in that particular exercise, there is a short introduction explaining, the explaining why the practice is beneficial. These experiences are short, so students stay engaged and are also able to work on a multitude of practices or techniques in a rel relatively small amount of time. The blue dots on the page um, indicate uh, sort of samples. So if you're interested later on um, in playing it, or if you want me to play one now, just to show you. <laughs> Um, but just keep in mind that students uh, are wearing their noise canceling headphones. They can rotate themselves in their pod to, uh, to turn away from, from viewers so they can be totally immersed in the experience. Another one of our wellness projects this year involved putting together a telewellness resource center for students and parents, which can be found on our school's uh, website. The online resource center is another opportunity for students to participate in wellness outside of the school day by having um, them by giving them access to an array of mental health resources and activities. Through the telewellness resource center students can also check in virtually with their school counselor when they are off campus for the day or on independent study and would like academic guidance or wellness counseling. This wellness uh, service is offered during school hours. I also post on this page updates from our Titan Wellness Center. As you can see, they host a community connection for parents and caregivers um, in our wellness lounge on Tuesday mornings, the first week of every month from 8.30 to 9.30. One of the final projects I'm working on this year, which uh, should be completed in June, is our mindfulness studio. As our counseling needs continue to grow over the past 10 months, we have a definite need for more space. The most cost-effective way to do this would to be create a room within a room of the wellness lounge using a frosted glass semi-sliding door partition system to create the additional space. During the lunchtime Zen zone, when the space is not being used for counseling, it will serve as a mindfulness studio where up to four students at a time can immerse themselves in mindfulness practices similar to those designed for our pods. I would like to uh, take this moment to thank Partnership for Awareness, PFA, for their generous donations over the past two years, um, as well as board member Joseph Chang for his generous wellness donation last year. Thank you. And to our other generous donors for making all of these projects possible. To access school-based counseling services, anyone including an administrator, teacher, school staff member, parent, or the student themselves can make a referral for counseling. The referral link is connected to the Titan Wellness Referral Center at the high school, which is also located on our counseling page. We have a QR code as well to the link posted on our wellness lounge door, or students can come into the office to make a referral. The Titan Center manages all referrals and intern assignments. In closing, I would like to share uh, our wellness lounge usage data. All students um, entering the wellness lounge must first sign in using a Google form. Students are asked their name, their grade level, and the purpose of their visit. The collected data is confidential and no students' names are used for any other purpose um, other than tracking numbers, uh, tracking use numbers, monitoring student needs, and planning for future projects. The data is also monitored by our Titan Wellness Center and our wellness technician manages this, uh, the data for both sites. Since August of this school year, over 1,540 students have visited the Wellness Lounge. This number will, of course, uh, continue to grow over the course of the final few weeks of school. At the time of collecting the data, 67.3% of those visiting were sixth graders, 22.2% were seventh graders, and 10.5% were eighth graders. 
70% of those students who, uh, who came into the lounge were uh, walk-ins and 30% had scheduled individual or group counseling. Uh, those uh, 1,540 visitors were asked if this was their first time using or visiting the wellness lounge, and 90% indicated no, while 9.9% indicated yes, this was their first time visiting. This tells us that 90% of the students who have visited the wellness lounge at least once are returning. I also wanted to track the uh, use of our mindfulness pods, which just opened in late March, and there were 71 first time users. 46.5% use the pods in the wellness lounge and 53% use the pods in our library. My goal for next year will be to continue uh, tracking the use, but also to embed opportunities for comments and or suggestions on students' personal experiences in using the pod and any suggestions for future mindfulness activities. This concludes my presentation and update on the uh, Huntington Middle School Wellness Program. And I wanna thank you all for allowing us to share. Thank you. Thank you. Wow, that, that was incredible. I want to go there, right? We should have our board meetings there. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much, June, for that. All right, next up at this time, I'd like to turn it over to Assistant Superintendent, attendant, Superintendent Dr. Lena Richter and Principal Kurtenbach for district initiative updates on the Titan Medical Arts Academy update and San Marino High School block scheduling update and do, oh, no, that's a different one. Okay, go ahead. Thank you, President Ryan. Um, yes, I agree. I want to go visit the Wellness Lounge as well. Um, it sounds like a, a, a wonderful inviting place for our students and our faculty. And it was a wonderful presentation. So thank you, um, Board of Education, Superintendent Delatore, esteemed cabinet. Tonight, we um, are excited to present to you an, a brief update on the district initiatives that have been in the planning process and about to launch in this upcoming school year, the 23-24 school year. Principal Kurtenbach, Assistant Principal Kasim Clay, and I will be co-presenting, um, and we are going to start off with the dual language immersion program. Next slide, please. So as I mentioned, the purpose is just to provide the board a brief update on recent programs and initiatives that have been in the planning process over the course of the last year. Those include the Mandarin Dual Language Immersion Program, which is um, scheduled to launch at Carver Elementary in the fall. Medical Arts Academy, which is scheduled to launch at San Marino High School in the fall. Block Scheduling, which is again, scheduled to launch in the fall. And Dual Enrollment, which continues to run at the high school and continues to expand. So we're super excited about that. And Principal Kurtenbach and Assistant Principal Kasim Clay will dive a little bit deeper into that. So I'm gonna begin with the Mandarin Dual Language Immersion Program. I thought it would be important to include the board goal at the top of the slides that we are presenting tonight because all of the initiatives that we are um, providing an overview overview for directly align and promote the board goals that have been set by the Board of Education this past year, specifically board goal D, which is to produce high quality global citizens. And all of the programs and initiatives that you're going to hear tonight directly support and promote that board goal. So I wanted to start with the first slide on the benefits of dual language immersion programs. This is no surprise to anyone. There are There is years and years of research dating back over 40 to 50 years on the benefits of dual language immersion program. And those benefits truly lie in the three pillars that define dual language immersion programs. And that those three are to promote bilingualism and biliteracy, and oftentimes multilingualism in our community to promote high academic achievement and cognitive dexterity, and lastly, cultural competency and social awareness. And I think those are really important um, in any district, in any community. Next slide, please. So the Mandarin Dual Language Immersion Planning process, this was a process that has started over a year ago. 
And it actually started at the beginning, actually a little bit last year, but at the beginning of this school year, we really dived into it. And that began with an interest survey that we administered to our community to see if there was an appetite for a dual language immersion program. And the results of that survey really indicated that there's a strong interest in appetite for a dual language immersion program for our school district and the preferred language was Mandarin. So this started all in fall. Once we had that data for um, the Mandarin program, we quickly convened a committee. And I cannot thank the dual language immersion committee enough. It, they are a fantastic group of professionals. They included teachers, administrators, representatives from English language learners, students with exceptional needs, district um, administrators, di district classified staff, and you know through their constant sense of inquiry, commitment, dedication, we really, really put together, we believe, a comprehensive and state-of-the-art program that we, we are excited to launch in the fall. That committee met formally five times over this past year after school. Um, we had many, many informal meetings to really understand and grasp an understanding of what a successful and effective dual language immersion program looks like. With regards to staffing, we began that process early, probably in October and November of this school year. We were super excited that we were able to find um, an amazing Mandarin dual teacher who comes to San Marino with over 10 years of experience in a Mandarin dual language immersion program uh, as a teacher. So we're excited about that. And we're excited that her partner teacher who will be teaching the English portion of the program is one of our very own kindergarten teachers, Ms. Helen Yam, who is at Carver. Uh, currently. And I do want to thank um, Mr. Joseph C. Chang for connecting us to all of his amazing colleagues and co-workers that um, really supported us in this process and gave us some guidance as to who to reach out to with for ideas and direction. So thank you, Mr. Chang. Very much appreciated. We also took that committee and we visited schools. We went to about five or six different schools who have implemented successfully Mandarin dual language immersion program classes. We wanted to learn from those who do it well, but we also wanted to learn um, about some of their challenges so we can anticipate and mitigate those challenges before we launch the program. And that was exciting. The schools that we visited were very inviting um, and we continue to consult with them and communicate with them you know, throughout the planning process. Our committee has also attended professional conferences such as CABE, which is the California Association of Bilingual Education, a Mandarin DLI Pedagogy Institute. There's also another institute that's coming up in June and our two Mandarin and English teachers will be attending that as well. And this summer, our two teachers who are an amazing dynamic duo, um, with an amazing kindergarten team at Carver as well, um, we'll be engaging in a summer planning institute because there really is a lot of work that goes behind creating a strong Mandarin dual language immersion program. And so as you can see, the planning process has been long, it's been year long, but our committee has been outstanding, amazing. And um, I think we've pretty much covered all bases. We took a multi-pronged approach to researching it and we believe that we are ready to launch a very successful program in the fall. With regards to communication, we felt it was imperative that we kept our community abreast of what's going on. So as you can see, there's a brief timeline. We put a parent information night together for any parents who were interested in the dual language immersion program. It was not a commitment, just an information night to share what it's all about. We sent the survey out at the beginning of March through March 24th, and that's right around when registration begins for TKK in grade one. And then during the weeks of April 3rd through 21st, we administered the Flossom Target Language Assessment, which um, assesses native language proficiency, in this case, Mandarin, to see how to build the classrooms because we need to make sure that at least half of our students, more or less, have that native language proficiency to serve as a model for students who don't have that language proficiency. And then on April 21st, all our families were notified of participation, whether they were selected to participate in the program. And then this coming Monday, we have another parent information night for families who were selected um, for the program. So we're excited about that. And that meeting will be facilitated by our Mandarin team, as well as Principal Caldwell. 
So the curriculum, a lot of work went into this as well, researching the curriculum at all the schools that we visited, speaking with different consultants, and really tapping into the expertise of Ms. Christine Lin, who is our Mandarin dual language teacher. And so what we landed on was we are piloting better immersion as the Mandarin language arts curriculum. We're also going to be using level learning, which is very much like AR. Um, it's reading and writing. It standards a lot. Excuse me. Chinese reader is the one that's very much like AR. It is standards aligned. It has nonfiction and fiction. It covers math, science, social studies, and history as well. And then also level learning, which is kind of similar to iReady, right? So students are able to um, engage in learning and then take an informal assessment at the end so we can monitor their progress with regards to language acquisition in the target language, which is Mandarin. Students in the Mandarin language program will be learning all subject areas in both languages. So math, science, social studies will be in Mandarin and English. The only difference will be English language arts will be taught by the English teacher and Man Mandarin language arts will be taught by the Mandarin teacher. Um, if I can just go back to that one site, I did wanna mention that for the better immersion curriculum, since that will be our formal curriculum for the program, we will be piloting it. And by the end of the first semester, we will be engaging in an evaluation of that program to determine as to whether we would like to bring it to the board for formal adoption. So the, what does the program look like? Again, it will be at Carver. It's starting with kindergarten and hoping to grow one grade level each year. There will be two classes. One will be all in Mandarin and one will be all in English. Each of those classes, the Mandarin and the English, will be comprised of approximately 50% native speakers and 50% non-native speakers. Again, to allow the non-native speakers to have a language model from their peers so that they can acquire the language at a much quicker rate. Um, we have many, we have about 17 current TK students from Valentine and from Carver combined who are interested and have been selected to participate in the program. So we're very excited about that. And I know the families are super excited that they're gonna be participating. We're also working on collaborative partnerships with the CABE, California Association of Bilingual Education for resources, professional development, all you know, um, curriculum, supplemental materials. We're also working closely with PCC. Again, thank you, Mr. C. Joseph Chang for helping us make those connections. Um, they actually have a very robust Mandarin language program at PCC. And in our conversations, we are looking at a partnership that will possibly allow their students to serve as instructional aides for our Mandarin program. So that's really exciting. And then we're also working with the, uh, the Chinese School of San Marino um, to offer our parents opportunities to reinforce learning, whether it be after school or on Saturdays. And then, as I said, May 15th, we have our parent meeting um, at, from 5.30 to 6.30 p.m. in the Carver Auditorium. Next slide. Oh, that was it. So that is my brief summary. Again, I, um, I just want to thank the board for supporting this vision and this program. We think it's a fantastic program, um, and we really look forward to launching it, and we'll continue to keep the board apprised of implementation and progress. Thank you. Thank you. And I would now like to turn it over to our amazing principal, Kurtenbach. Thank you, Superintendent Dr. Richter and Superintendent Dr. De La Torre and board members. Mrs. Ryan, <laughs> online. Um, we have uh, three slides. We want to go over three uh, pretty big programs here. One that we've been uh, working on for, this will be the end of our second full year. Um, one that will be beginning next year, or actually two will be beginning next year. Uh, the first is our Titan Medical Arts Academy. Um, to date, we've uh, been working very hard with P Pasadena City College to articulate the appropriate courses. Um, that is a, uh, a difficult task, as we've explained before. Uh, we request courses, they put those requests in, they have to go to their professors with those requests um, to determine whether or not they have the right uh, 
a group of professors at the right time. Um, at this point, uh, we're very confident that we do have those. We've been working with uh, Carlos Castillion. Is that his last name? Um, it's a group of Carloses that do all the work here um, up at PCC. And uh, we are very confident that our first two courses that you see there in the ninth grade, uh, Intro to Health Science and Human Disease, uh, will go off without a hitch. You can see that our counselors have gathered 75 course requests, which means that we have 75 students uh, who are interested in entering this academy. Um, and I would say that that already says that it is a wild success uh, in its offering. Um, we have approximately 820 students, so that's close to 10% of our kids are already interested. Um, we are looking at options and opportunities moving forward with our 10th grade curriculum. That'll be medical terminology and anatomy. Uh, in that time, we will be using our anatomage tables. Those should be delivered at the end of this month. Uh, we are moving one of our fantastic teachers who's graciously offered his room, one of the biggest science rooms we have. It is on the lower floor, Mr. Russell Silver. Thank you, Russell, if you're listening. Um, he's going to be moving upstairs with the rest of the science team, and uh, we will be moving those tables in probably the week between graduation and summer school. Um, and then once we get those set up, we'll start to offer the training needed to incorporate those, uh, not just into these courses, uh, but we'd ideally like to have them in our bio courses as well. Um, and then we're going to look at some other options uh, using kinesiology, which is a part of our dual enrollment program, which we'll talk about in a couple of slides as well. Um, so all materials have been purchased thanks to Rotary. Uh, and PT affiliates. Uh, without them, we would be begging you all for money. So thank goodness for Rotary and um, uh, PT affiliates for stepping up. So we have our nanomage tables. We have our, um, our what do you call it? Goggles and the happy, uh, Precision. virtual reality. Uh, sorry, I should have had the kids from eSports here. They would have helped me with that. <laughs> um, all of that equipment should be delivered uh, well with well before the beginning of the school year so that we can begin implementation. Uh, we will be sharing that equipment with PCC. It's part of our um, uh, uh, want to make a strong uh, connection. Uh, and I think over the last three years, we've done a really good job in building that connection uh, with the help of Mr. Casey, Mr. Castiglione, and and everybody at PCC and you, the board, and that support. Um, we're going to start with some communication to families. We're trying to get a, a solid commitment. One of the things that, you know, we don't know where this is going to go because it's going to be our first year. We want to make sure that people understand that this isn't just a drop in and then drop out. Um, this is very, very important for us because, as you can see, in 11th grade, we go into AP seminar, and that is where you're really thinking about thinking. You're thinking about the philosophical process of learning um, because then in 12th grade, you do a very deep dive into the research for your chosen field. Uh, so we could end up producing kids who want to be doctors, nurses, medical scribes, or kids who want to design new technologies that um, help in the, uh, the medical arts. Um, Mr. Casey, anything to add? Yeah, I just wanted to add, uh, this is begins in ninth grade. So it's meant to be a four-year pathway. Next year, we're doing something a little bit different where we're allowing our ninth and 10th graders to, to get on board. So the 10th graders have a little bit of a different kind of abbreviated um, pathway. Um, for our ninth graders, there's about 38 ninth graders and uh, 30, I guess, 37 10th uh, graders who are, who are going to be um, in the medical arts pathway. The communication. Uh, we're working really closely. Right now, the counselors are working on a contract that's going to go out to our ninth and 10th grade students. Um, we want them to know exactly what this is. It is a four-year commitment. We want that to be something that students know the expectations before they go in and, uh, to the program. And that's something that we're going to be sending out uh, within the week. Um... Thanks, Steve. <laughs> uh, block scheduling. Uh, you will see on the left, a little hard to read because it's small, but I'm sure you guys can, can blow that up on your screens. Um, our block schedule. So we will have the majority of our days of the week will be an A or a B block. Uh, most Mondays and Wednesdays will be periods one, three, five. And most Tuesdays and Thursdays will be periods two, four, six. Um, and then on Fridays, we will see every student. 
Uh, this aligns with Huntington Middle School's bell schedule for the most part, minimum days and assembly days get a little wonky, but that's understood. And thanks to Mr. Topalian um, and his excellent communication, we've kind of worked that out. So we'll be able to support our staff that we share um, really effectively. Um, what we're doing right now is still negotiating a few of the effects uh, with SMTA, and uh, we have hopes of wrapping that up tomorrow. We have a negotiations meeting there. Uh, we've set aside, uh, thanks to Dr. Richter, with some of the grants we have coming out of COVID, over $70,000 in planning and preparation resources for our staff, including 20 hours of additional planning time. Currently, 19 staff have taken us up on that. We suspect most are waiting till the summer. Um, as you might suspect, April and May is an incredibly busy time uh, for everybody at a school site. Um, we uh, tried this with our uh, CASP testing, um, and we got pretty much positive reviews. Um, uh, I remember one comment that a student said was, some classes seem longer than others. Um, and that just comes, that's, that's very natural. Um, as Mr. Jamison said, I'm not going to have kids singing for an hour and a half because that would burn their voices out. So he's working on how do we use that time effectively uh, to support students. Um, but then you go into the band class and it's, wow, we have an hour and a half of rehearsal, which we've never had before. Um, same with speech and debate. Speech and debate usually is practicing well into the night. And a couple of students said, we just realized that we might not have to do that next year. Um, we've had opportunities for growth in areas like um, looking at our science labs. You can now run a full lab within a day in some cases, um, and then give ch kids a chance to process, come back a day later, and really uh, reflect on that lab work. Um, there's an opportunity given uh, the recent sort of blossoming of AI to try to keep more assessment in the classroom because you have a longer period of time. Um, and so we are suggesting to our staff for the most part, do everything you can to use all of your instructional time to effectively evaluate students in front of you. Um, because as we all know now, once it goes home, it's anybody's guess on who's doing that. Um, I wrote most of this presentation using chat GPT myself. Um, we're currently building the master calendar. And what that means is we're, we're making sure that we have our days clearly articulated so our parents and our students and our staff know this is an A day, this is a B day, this is a minimum day, this is an assembly day, because that makes a real difference in what you can plan to do now that we don't have the exact same uh, structure every single day. So we're looking over that multiple times before we go out and really publish it, uh, but I'm 95% confident in that schedule right there because Dr. Richter and I and Mr. Tapalian and Mr. Kasim Clay have looked over it uh, a lot of times and it's something that we've pushed out to our staff a lot. So uh, right now we're really pretty solid on this. Um, anything to add, Mr. Casey? Yeah, I just wanted to add uh, 19 teachers have taken advantage of it. Many of the teachers are also waiting to find out who their partner would uh, next year in terms of their teaching assignments. About half the departments have finalized uh, who's teaching what next year and which sections. Um, we are one of our goals this year that we that we discussed with teachers starting back in January and February is that we wanted to foster greater collaboration, especially as we move into block scheduling. Um, so pairing up teachers as much as we can so they can collaborate um, as they they go into this uh, new world with block scheduling. Um, so as they learn that this week, we suspect that a lot of teachers will take advantage of this PD now that they know who their partner is going to be for next year. And uh, lastly, an update on dual enrollment. As you can see, um, over the course of the last two years, when we were able to solidify courses to offer, there's been a fairly consistent growth, not just in the number of students taking advantage of it, uh, but in the types of courses that we're able to offer. Um, what we're most excited about is next year, these all don't have to be after school which has been a really challenging thing for students like Kelly if she wants to take it because she has badminton. Um, uh, we do have students who still take it even though they're athletes uh, and they work that out with their coaches. Their coaches are extremely supportive. Of course, you go on Tuesday, Thursday and then come to practice Monday, Wednesday. Um, but we're hopeful to be able to move 
some of these into the regular school day if that's available. Um, if not, we're going to keep them after school and still be able to offer them. But if you think about the spring of 23 there, you see five courses, right? None of those are the Medical Arts Academy courses. So now you add on to that the four Medical Arts Academy courses and you're up to nine different courses that we could potentially be offering next year. I'm not an expert, but I'm pretty sure that no other school in the San Gabriel Valley offers that. Um, additionally, with our honors courses, which I think are 14, and our APs, which will be 21 or 22, um, we're offering the most high-level courses to any student in the San Gabriel Valley. You have full access. There are no barriers. If you are a freshman and you want to take Psych 1 and you have time to take Psych 1, you can take it. If you want to take uh, AP Computer Science, you can take it. Um, if as an 11th grader, you've never taken Honors English and you want to try AP Lang, you can take it. Um, and what we're seeing is students rise to the challenges because as we're monitoring the data, they're getting into these courses and they're doing great. They're not just doing okay, they're doing great. Um, and we're counseling them. If you have a student who's, you know, you're at roughly a C average, you have to understand, and that's part of that, that conversation we have with counselors, what that workload's really gonna be like for you. Um, and the expectations are very clear. Um, and so students are making very informed choices and um, for the most part, they're doing an excellent job and our staff is doing a fantastic job of supporting them, um, keeping the rigor strong, keeping the learning high, but making sure that students gain access to the curriculum in a way that helps them where they're at uh, so they can move forward. Um, anything to add about dual enrollment? Yeah, I just wanted to add all these courses came from uh, what our students uh, told us that they wanna take. Um, so we're going to continue to do that. We solicit that before we begin every semester. Just got a call from, from Carlos, our PCC um, contact about, you know, what are we going to do for uh, the fall? And so we're, we're, we're telling them we're going to get that inventory from our students and choose those courses soon. One thing to note is as we move into kind of the Medical Arts Academy era, um, a lot of these courses up here are primarily our ninth and 10th grade students. So our ninth and 10th grade students who are trying to get that that kind of taste of college level work, a lot of our 11th and 12th graders are, of course, have full loads of AP and HP courses. What's interesting next year with block schedule and, and something that we've been kicking around within our counseling staff and also uh, with PCC is about a hundred of our seniors have senior study hall, which means they don't have either a first or a sixth period. There are some different things we can do with them um, next year. Um, with regard to that, and then maybe even expanding that into one, two, or five, six. But now you have a senior who has an opportunity to say, okay, I know my major, I know the school I'm going to go to, maybe in the spring, I'm going get to get ahead. And there's a course that we could offer in the spring semester um, during the day, specifically for our seniors to help them prepare and have credits that they can transfer to their college or university. Um, and that's that's due to our collaboration with with PCC, but also one of the one of the benefits of block scheduling that we can take advantage of as well. Thank you all so much. I have some questions before you run away. I was waiting for. President Ryan. Just yes, we did win this. We did win the students versus staff basketball, and I was the high scorer. Go ahead. <laughs> I was very nervous watching you play. <laughs> Everybody was. Um, so thank you so much that, that you guys have been doing a lot, a lot, a lot of work. Um, so I did have a question, and you sort of touched on that a little bit about the impact that you anticipate the student. Let me back up the question. With 75 students requesting the courses, with the addition of the new medical arts pathway, and be, given that it's a four-year commitment, have you gotten a sense at all of what the impact will be on other electives that the students have taken over the past few years when we didn't have these things? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, we, we knew because we've been discussing this for several years with Dr. De La Torre that we were going to have to um, make some shifts. So you know that two years ago, 
we eliminated a pathway, one that was um, computer science. We kept the AP computer science. It's a very accessible course for students who can, and they can take that without really any prerequisites. Algebra helps, but you really don't need it. Um, so in eliminating that, that CTE pathway, we started opening that door and we kind of watched where kids went. Um, and then uh, because of our, our, our solid uh, relationship with Mr. Kerr, who runs a graphic arts pathway, we talked to him about, you know, obviously we still need your book, we still need journalism. Um, and we want some graphic arts, which are kind of built in there but we wanted to eliminate that pathway to open the door for the Medical Arts Academy, um, which he said, absolutely, let's do that. Um, we actually have him doing, I mean, that guy runs like half the programs right now. Um, but in our course requests, I don't think we're really seeing a, a massive shift. We're allowing kids who jump into MAA, I am because I, I do have the authority to not do the CTE, and which is, is that five credits or 10? It's five. So we're kind of giving that as an out, but we still have our media arts, which is super strong and robust. Our business pathway this year had five sections. So we had to give an extra session to Miss Rushing. So we think those two will stay strong. And I actually think this is going to strengthen VAPA. Um, a lot of kids are going to be not into the medical arts. Okay. So what's left for them? You've got business, you got media, and you got VAPA. So one of the things that we want to do in the next couple of years is strengthen our relationship with PCC and potentially articulate some stuff with VAPA, uh, which can build that capacity too. What I think we're seeing with the Medical Arts Academy is that there's a lot more opportunities for us to explore, connecting not just to PCC, but other local entities that could maybe support different programs that we have. Um, and give kids an opportunity to have some experiences here that they're not going to get anywhere else. That's really what I think we're pulling from this. You can get coursework just about anywhere, but experiences are what colleges are looking for. So within that coursework, if you're going and doing Caltech STEM, that's really interesting. If you're working at the Huntington, that's really interesting. But if you're just going to go take a course, you can kind of go, well, you know, any kid can kind of get into that course if they wanted to. So we're trying to uh, find those experiences. I'm not, I'm not very concerned that it's going to lead to anything else, but we're monitoring that really closely. Have you seen any dip in course requests for things? Um, just got a text from PCC. <laughs> um, you know, I think you hit, hit it on the, hit it on the head there. The, the we've gotten, as we've been preparing for this. So as we've kind of, we've been kind of weaning out, if you will, maybe that's not the right word, but our, our stronger programs um, and, and emphasizing those. And so now we're at a point and just looking at the course request right now, everything like it's, it looks like a stronger capacity than it was when, when, when we came in three years ago. Um, the numbers in BAPA look strong. Everything looks strong, stronger. Um, um, band and music is one area that we're going to re, 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 rebuilding and we're, we're looking at that. Um, so we're going to go back and we're going to revisit that. That's really the only area. Couldn't say that three years ago. Um, pretty much every area of VAPA was struggling. Um, so that's a huge, huge, huge improvement. Choir is, is larger. Dance has exploded. Art. Drama is growing. Um, art are, is strong. So we're in a much better position than, than we were, and, and we're going to figure out our music program as well um, once, our, once our new director comes in and, and, and can kind of show us how that curriculum is going to look going forward. Um, but overall, the course requests look very balanced. Next week, our counselors are going to get in there um, and clean everything up to make sure that data looks really good and, and the students are, are, have the courses that they, that they want to take for next year, um, and we can finalize our course offerings. Uh, but it looks, it looks really good. It looks really balanced right now. One other piece of data, it's good data. Uh, we have at, at this point, six students specifically who've been able to come to San Marino High School because we have Medical Arts Academy next year. So, uh, and those came from local districts. These are students who have, you know, they brought us their transcripts because they're like, look at me, look at me. And they're excellent. Um, and they came on tours. We did over 200 tours of our high school this year. Um, our counseling and our ASB students um, 
I mean, some of the ASB kids, I think they could give a better, they do give a better tour than any adult. And it's starting to pay really big dividends. Uh, some of the other things like the uh, arts rock, we still have kids, Derek Jameson was saying he has fifth graders still running up to him saying, we're all taking choir next year. There's a hundred kids who are gonna take choir next year. Um, so we think that we're definitely on the right track. We're growing. Um, I can confidently say we are increasing in enrollment. If we just keep on the path of iterating and finding new opportunities for kids, we're gonna we're gonna keep going in that direction. Uh, the next, I'd like to ask uh, some of the finance and the budget issue. So, the seventy thousand is that that's a one-time money for to initiate for the, the PD? program or the seventy thousand for the PD for the the deal in Yeah, that yeah. comes from I don't remember what the grant's called. The educator effectiveness. Educator grant. effectiveness grant. Uh -huh. We got that with COVID coming out of COVID. Oh, okay. So you just uh, allocate the uh, some of the fund to yes, there. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Appropriate. Yeah. Uh, by by the way, for the medical art, for the when we purchase a uh, anatomy uh, table, uh, two right? No. Um, Just three. Uh, four. There will be four at the end yeah, of the there's, day. There's three right now. Three right do, now. Do, do we buy for the uh, warranty or maintenance? Because uh, you, you know the- I don't know how to fix them. Uh, <laughs> so, so you-, you, you, you yes, I, I think uh, Dr. Richter yeah, can yeah. answer that. We're going to give them to Dr. Choi. And <laughs> Yes, each of the tables. Um, you, you know, I, I because uh, um, my profession, you know, I, I deal with uh, some of the radiology uh, equipment. <laughs> yeah, so that the maintenance yeah. and the warranty actually is uh, costly. Yes, so, yeah. So each of the tables comes with a three year warranty. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. yes. uh, free or what? No, oh, nothing's free. <laughs> I wish it was free, but it's not free. Yes, yeah. we did have to pay for that. Yeah. Okay. I have one more request to ask of you. Um, these are amazing programs. Um, one of the things that we have not been very good at is following our students afterwards um, from the, when they graduate from the high school. And I know that's something you have all been trying to sort of work on. And I'd love to be able to see some data about how the ability of these students taking these PCC dual enrollment, dual enrollment courses, what the impact that has on their college experience. Is it impacting the duration of time, their preparation, their admission, all those factors, because part of the, the objective of them taking it is to get them better prepared for college. And so I'd love to be able to see some data as we continue to build now that we're, I guess, three years, next year will be our third year. So we might be able to look a little bit at how that might be impacting our students and where that might be more useful. Perhaps a course turned out to not be very useful in transferring credit, or perhaps it wasn't taught or in a way that was effective. And I know COVID years was kind of an off year, but that would be helpful data to have in the future. We're not gonna tell you, but we have a plan for something we were gonna do next year. I knew you'd but have we're not going to tell you until we've actually put the plan in place, but I yeah. knew you'd have a plan. We're, we're, we're doing something like that. And we're actually, we want to make it actionable for our kids. So we're trying to figure out a way to get um, former um, students, Kelly, you can come back uh, to speak to our, our kids. Uh, and we're looking at the spring break time because uh, colleges and universities obviously have different breaks than us. And a lot of our kids come home. Uh, so we're trying to figure out a way to do that. Um, it's, it's most important for us to reflect consistently and that's the work that our counseling team does. Um, and that's why they drive the choices that we offer. Uh, we as adults often think we know what every kid wants and we absolutely uh, know some of the good decisions. We mostly know what bad ones they shouldn't make. Uh, so it's important for us to ask those questions and to listen. And if we hadn't done that, I'm not sure that any of this would have taken off. So yeah, we're definitely going to keep monitoring that and we'll have some data for you next year. Yeah. All right. I'm going to go home and see my dog. Thank you guys. Thank you. I wanted to say one general note. All of these things are things that someone said couldn't be done. 
You can't yeah. have a dual language program within a school. You can't have all these courses. You can't do a medical arts pathway in a public high school. Um, you can't do block scheduling in San Marino. Right. You know, these are all things that have for years, not just in San Marino, but just people say that about public school, about California schools. And so we've heard kudos. that for many, many, many years. Yeah, thank kudos. you for your leadership. Thank you, that. Dr. Del Torre and, and yeah. your staff. It's my it's yeah. my fabulous team, really. I couldn't do it without any of them. So thank you. And my amazing principals. So fantastic. Mm -hmm. All right, so it looks like we've presented um, wellness center, medical arts, block scheduling, dual enrollment, Mandarin dual language. Have we presented business services? I think not. So at this time, I would like to turn it over to Dr. Lin and Dr. Choi Thank for the you. business okay. services and safety update. Thank you, President Ryan, members of the Board of Education, Superintendent Dr. Delatori, Executive Cabinet, and student board member. Uh, this feels like a mini at State of the District uh, tonight with all these wonderful <laughs> programs and the updates that we're giving. And uh, it's uh, my privilege this evening to uh, uh, represent business services, uh, Dr. Choi Technology Services, uh, to provide an update on safety, facilities, and finance. Uh, starting with safety, we focus on two areas of implementation, prevention and physical protection strategies. So the goals of uh, surrounding pre prevention include reduction of school social factors that contribute to violent behaviors, uh, identification of students who are at risk for violent behavior and effective intervention to prevent acts of violence. We saw earlier with the wellness center that contributes towards this cause. Strategies for engagement include improve on positive education environments, free of bullying, harassment, and discrimination, providing early interventions, detection and intervention of bullying, harassment, abuse, and other adverse behaviors, identification of students at risk for violent behavior, and intervention to address needs, threat assessment of students exhibiting indicators for imminent violent behavior, and intervention to prevent adverse behavior. This year, we formed a multidisciplinary threat management team, uh, which consists of administrators, uh, site and district, school psychologists, counselors, the San Marino Police Department, and the San Marino Fire Department. Uh, the purpose of the multidisciplinary threat management team is to recognize potential threats by confidentially collaborating on a regular basis to discuss students, employees, and members of the community who pose a threat or concern. Uh, this team also provides necessary support for each of the schools, existing threat assessment teams uh, when needed. The district has also developed and shared the crisis response intervention plan with the San Marino Police Department. The plan covers the protocols involved when the crisis were to occur, and the plan is, uh, has been presented to the Safety and Wellness Committee in November. Uh, for the 23-24 school year, we will be offering evening safety uh, trainings for our parents. Um, we're looking forward to a uh, the parent safety trainings to provide to each of the four school sites. Instead of doing one massive one district wide, we're going to uh, be at each of the school sites uh, to provide this opportunity for our parents to learn about um, enhanced security awareness and to be empowered and uh, to improve skills for identifying threats. Also, the elementary schools are looking to providing an Alice refresher for veteran staff, and we also have new staff members, so it's good to have them be immersed in the Alice protocols. Alice stands for Alert, Lockdown, Inform, Counter, and Evacuate. Both elementary schools received these trainings about four years ago, uh, two years prior to the pandemic, and it's a good time to get a, a booster shot in Alice. The district is also providing on-site CPR, first aid, AED, and survival training early in August. So far, we've had 102 faculty and staff members registered for that voluntarily before school even begins, and they're willing to come in to get those training. How many uh, AED we have? A lot. Dr. Delatore got us. Like we just ordered a ton more. $28,000 sure. worth of it. Yeah. It's everywhere, even in Del Mar uh, yeah. a field. 
Okay, so I think we, we have enough. It's, we have a concierge service that comes yes. out to make sure that the batteries are always um, replenished and um, all of the units are in working order. Um, so we pay for that on an annual basis. And right. we, yeah, so we did get that additional, as, as Dr. Lynn mentioned, $28,000 from PT affiliates to buy um, more defibrillators. Yes, and the concierge service will save uh, Dr. Choi, uh, you know, his sanity because yeah. he doesn't have to, you know, upgrade firmware or anything on those devices. Uh, the district is also making use of our JPA safety credits to upgrade the boardroom, to declutter wires on the ground, eliminate tripping hazards, and replace broken and unstable seating. The funds uh, being used for the boardroom uh, do not come from district funds. Uh, they do not come from our budget. Uh, finally, along with the hardening of the campuses is the protection of the district's digital assets to mitigate risks. The district is working on the initial iterations of the San Marino Unified School District Business Continuity Plan. Dr. Choi will take uh, talk more about the safety and technology. Thank you, Dr. Lin, members of the board, executive team. It's my pleasure to provide an update on safety and technology. So schools have traditionally relied on physical security features such as walls, fences, and gates. However, as threats become increasingly complex, schools are also turning to technology to enhance their overall safety. San Marino Unified is no exception, as we improve situational awareness with the use of video cameras, conduct, back, conduct background checks of visitors through the Raptor system, and practice emergency drills using two-way communications tools through the catapult system. Most recently, we added SMPD dispatch officers, sergeants, and commanders, as well as our after-school partners, Chinese School of San Marino and Right at School into Catapult. I'm pleased to also share that the district is actively applying for a federal Department of Justice grant in hopes of an award to upgrade our aging camera system. An upgraded camera system would leverage visual analytics to detect suspicious behaviors, and improve collaboration with local law enforcement. We are also actively working with a vendor called Zero Eyes to notify school administrators and first responders when the gun is visually detected at our schools. As we continue to participate in the facilities advisory committee meetings, as well as the facilities master planning process, we will learn about additional ways where technologies such as door and access control systems can further improve our ability to respond to physical threats. Another area where technology is deeply involved with is cybersecurity. Unfortunately, K-12 schools today are targets. The district recently completed a cyber risk assessment sponsored by our insurance carrier. SMUSD is proud to be one of the few school districts with 24 seven cybersecurity monitoring. SMUSD also performs offsite backups for faster disaster recovery should a cyber incident occur. We are working to increase cyber-related drills, training, and assessments. One particular area that we need to work on is to replace the systems that have reached end of life or are no longer getting security updates. Finally, the last area I will highlight is internet safety. SMUSD continues to utilize internet filters to block harmful content and leverages the Go Guardian system to eliminate distractions, empower learning, and encourage digital citizenship. The image on the slide you see here is actually artwork created by using generative artificial intelligence. Generative AI, including the very popular chat GPT, is very, very new. As innovative educators, we are cautious to be safe, yet we are curious and optimistic about how AI will be applied to improve learning and teaching into the future. To this end, SMUSD is actively evaluating AI-enhanced filtering technologies that can assess internet content in real time, rather than filter based on past content categories that may have changed. I will now pass the presentation back to Dr. Lin to provide an update on facilities. Thank you, Dr. Choi. In our next slide, we're moving from safety and AI to uh, facilities. And you can see that that drawing is not done by AI. <laughs> we have two, <laughs> two architects in the audience and they can vouch for that. Um, the Facilities <laughs> Advisory Committee has met four times since January to discuss topics that include campus tours, solar power, facilities financing, 
financing strategies, budget and finance. I think I said finance three times. <laughs> facilities construction and facility use fees. Um, a lot of facilities require financing, I guess, right? That's um, mm -hmm. part of how it works, I guess. In our next meeting this Thursday, uh, uh, Facilities Advisory Committee meeting, we um, would like to invite LPA to do that presentation. And this is going to be on the 11th, 7 p.m. Uh, later this evening, we're going to have on the agenda for the board to approve and award to LPA the contract of developing the facilities master plan. We had four design firms that have submitted proposals and the interview panel unanimously chose LPA to, as they were the best fit for San Marino Unified School District to help the district develop the facilities master plan. Uh, we're gonna later ask LPA to uh, say a few words uh, when we get to that agenda item. Now to jumpstart the facilities master planning process, uh, it's required that we have the educational specifications, which would translate into design specifications for the facilities master plan. Also staff will be meeting with the demographer to review the draft report uh, that's already developed uh, that, will uh, that will be used in the facilities master planning process. Also staff, um, board president Ryan, board uh, clerk Chan, uh, facility uh, FAC reps have met with FM3 to review the process involved in conducting a bond feasibility survey. Um, staff is also working with Facilitron on providing reasonable facility use fees that conform with the Civic Center Act. Uh, currently, we use fees that are um, local survey results, but Facilitron provides a much more robust set of data because they serve uh, many more districts. And if we could get that data this year, that would help um, with that cause. Staff is also coordinating to finish a study on developer fees, developer fees. This is you know, when a, a resident were to add square footage uh, to living space, then we collect a certain amount of fee. A report has been developed. We are uh, going through that process right now. And once that's finalized, we'll present it to the board for um, approval. On the topic of HVACs, uh, these are the uh, heating, ventilation, and air conditioning units. The district will be interviewing two design build firms this Thursday, this Thursday, right before the FAC meeting. Um, they have submitted proposals to de deliver HVAC upgrades to HMS and Valentine. Uh, uh, we're using one-time ESSER funds, $900,000, that must be spent by September 2024. So there's a small time frame because we're looking at summertime, maybe some winter break time, when we're able to vacate those classrooms and put in those war units. Uh, those war units are over 30 years old. Um, a lot of them don't have the parts uh, you know, the manufacturers have stopped making those parts. So this is a great opportunity in which we're using one-time federal dollars to upgrade uh, as much as we can the 42 units that need to be replaced. We're not going to be able to do all 42, but we're going to uh, replace as many as possible. Now, for a variety of design and construction projects, the staff is also developing an RFQ, which is the request for, uh, request for quote uh, uh, to recruit and develop a list of architecture firms for projects separate from the development of the facilities master plan. Uh, we need this pool of architects for big and small projects in the district. For example, you know, the playground uh, at Carver, we're looking at fencing, some of the design, that, uh, some of the projects that require design work. Um, finally, staff met with the friends of Michael White Adobe to provide enhanced access to the Adobe. I don't know if you've seen it, the Adobe is right smack in the center of the high school next to the swimming pool. And um, so the, the idea is to uh, provide the enhanced access without negatively impacting school program and campus safety. So that falls on the facilities. Okay, next slide is we're talking about finance. So you're gonna see that these presentation slides don't have the same theme because these are separate topics. Uh, finance. So the district pension contribution rates uh, for the 23-24 school year, this is next year, 19.1% for teachers, counselors, school psychologists, and uh, administrators, uh, anybody who's um, certificated. This is on the state teacher retirement system, 19.1% employer contribution on top of salary. For uh, classified employees, these are the secretaries, custodians, um, and classified management, it's 27.1%. And this year is 25.37%. So classified employee con contributions towards classified employee PERS um, is going up to 27.1%. Uh, 
Uh, now, these figures don't include other statutory contributions such as workers' comp, unemployment insurance, Medicare, and Social Security for our classified employees. So we're talking about a really large chunk of the cost of living adjustment that we get from the state is going directly into pension obligations. Um, this is the part that people don't see, but this is a, a really large um, part that we have to consider when we develop bu the budget for next year. Now, looking ahead to the LCAP budget, 23-24 year, we're waiting for the governor's May revise. Uh, we're looking forward to May 19th when the School Services of California will do their presentation. A lot of good data will be utilized in the development of the budget. Now, although the, the statutory COLA, a cost of living adjustment, is legally required to be applied to the base grant of the local control funding formula or LCFF, the focus now shifts to whether the state can afford to fund the full statutory COLA. Okay, the state may not be able to afford that. So as part of the 23-24 governor's budget released in January, uh, in the January proposal, the governor acknowledged that the state revenues would be low enacted budget projections. The enacted budget was last July and uh, proposed to reduce the, art, the arts, music, and instructional materials discretionary block grant by $1.2 billion or 34% to help pay for the increased costs in LCFF. Okay, that, that has generated controversies. Um, at all levels, because some districts have already spent that money, even though they, you know, it wasn't apportioned yet. Also, state law authorized the Department of Finance to reduce the funder COLA if Proposition 98 resources are insufficient to support the state's funding obligation. So the department, the director of the Department of Finance at the state level has the ability to reduce the funder COLA after the governor's proposal, even though it's statutory. So these are the nuances of how the budget process will work. Uh, the latest state revenues data show that year to uh, date uh, tax revenue collections from the big three taxes. So there are three big sources of um, state revenues, personal income tax, corporate tax, and sales and use tax are lagging behind the governor's um, January projections by $5.1 billion, uh, which amounts to a commensurate Proposition 98 reduction of $2 billion. So these are all economic factors that we're experiencing at the state level. Uh, of course, staff will have more information to share once we have the May revise information. At this point, uh, thank you. This concludes my presentation and I would like to entertain any questions that you might have. Um, can you repeat the amount that uh, had to be spent by September for the FAC? Uh, not the FAC, the HVAC. Okay. Yes, yes. yes. Uh, nine hundred thousand uh, dollars. The restricted dollars that we have to spend on um, air quality. In this case, it kind of aligns with our need to upgrade HVACs very well, and um, we have um, decade-old units, more than three decades ancient um, <laughs> units that are wall-mounted at Valentine HMS, and we're going to take advantage of the nine hundred thousand dollars to um, to upgrade some of those. Actually take them out and then right. put new ones in. Mm -hmm. And that requires design and architectural work as well. I think so, it just has to be obligated by September. Obligated, and then we have 120 more days to actually completely eliminate those funds. But that part, I don't want to say, because I'd rather get it done <laughs> on time yeah. as opposed when, to risk returning plan, the money. When do you plan to start that work? Uh, so tomorrow we interview. Uh, the following week, we're going to award, we're going to bring it to the board for approval on May 23rd. And then once that is board approved on May 23rd, it's immediate. We're going to see skim marks, you know, and getting it done. <laughs> we have to meet that deadline. Don't want to return that money. So the new AC unit also um, installed on the trailer, who or not? Not the trailers, the classrooms have priority. Uh -huh. The classrooms have- so uh, Trailers still using the old unit. Yes. But a but, but couple AC unit are also very old. Right. Functioning, right? Right, right. And this is something that we can, you know, in the needs assessment uh, with, uh, once we develop the facilities master plan that will encompass some of these modular units. Sorry, <laughs> sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> Background music. Wow. I clicked on the wrong No, no, it's great. Tab. Because we're getting Sorry. into like serious stuff and money. And... Tab. Sorry. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Interesting song. Sorry. Too. Sorry. I'm noticing Dr. Richter so red. <laughs> Can I just show you how many tabs I have open and I clicked them? Okay. We, we need levity. Okay. Um, so, 
Yeah, the trailers, we're, we're going to look at the facilities master plan. Um, yeah, LPA does a phenomenal job. I've seen how they work in other districts with the blue dot, yeah, a green dot, and then, and then they gain input. They really involve stakeholders in gathering the input. Um, so if trailers is one of those items, that becomes a priority. I, I think we should call them portables as opposed to trailers. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or something or, more uh, attractive uh, than either of those things. <laughs> call it what it Modulars, is. Yeah. Call it what it Temporary is. housing units. Yes, thank you. Right. Yes. <laughs> That's much needed. My son's teacher said in the summer, she sometimes has to choose between having the air conditioning on or turning it off so that the kids can hear her. Yeah. So yeah. when it's 100 degrees outside, that is just not very feasible. And if the fan were to break or the motor, you know, I mean, you can't just like put oil in it. And yeah. see if, you know, also the, the new requirements is that we have to go electric. So there's no more gas units. Those also are powered by gas right now. So we've got to phase gas away and use electric. That means we have to upgrade the electric. So it's not just as easy as like, a, you know, replacing a home AC unit. There's, there's, you know. And then do we have generators for when we have the grids go down? At HMS, not at Valentine. And so that could be a needs assessment priority as well. So I think that these are all great segues into one of our upcoming action items, right? Yep. Um, and really validate the need for our facilities advisory committee and the work that they're doing right now. Um, before we move on to facilities, can I throw a question at Dr. Choi? Um, sure. You touched upon uh, chat GPT. Mm -hmm. um, and you used a phrase that I really like. You said curious, cautious, but curious um, in moving forward. So I know a lot of school districts are looking at blocking chat in their classrooms. And I have had people ask me that question. What is the district's approach? Are they going to block it? Um, but it sounds like we're moving cautiously, but not stamping out curiosity. Would that be an accurate Absolutely. I mean, okay. just as you described it, we want to be careful, but yet at the same time, we don't want to block it completely. You know, the, the same cautiousness was applied when YouTube came out like 20 yeah. somewhat years ago. Um, so we, we're, we're being very careful. We're getting a lot of input. Uh, it's a topic of discussion. Uh, I'm sure at the sites, also at the executive team level. Yeah. Um, so we're, 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 we're very optimistic that um, it's going to transform uh, teaching and learning, but we want to be safe doing it. And we're going to be doing a deeper dive into artificial intelligence and what that means for education over the summer. That's something of interest to our executive team and, and our leadership team. And we are really going to be looking at trying to, um, you know, get, get our uh, arms around that and how we can use it to our advantage. Um, and so we're not at this juncture prepared to like take a hard stand on that issue, but we are going to be studying it very closely. Thank you. Thank you for asking the question. Hey, I'm, I'm good. Any All right. other questions? Excellent. Thank you so much. Um, but before we move on, I just want to take a moment to just thank Dr. Delatore and her team, her cabinet for tonight's uh, pulse on our uh, initiatives, on our board initiatives. Uh, I found it very informative and I, I like the way you guys kind of tag team and kind of present it. It was um, short and succinct and really to the point. And uh, so I wanna make sure I thank uh, Ms. Gonzalez, who came and presented to us on the wellness uh, centers uh, at the middle school. And then of course, Dr. Uh, Mr. Tapalian, uh, Kassam Clay, Mr. Kurtenbach. Uh, did I miss anybody? Who am I missing? I'm missing Dr. Choi, Dr. Lin, uh, Dr. Rector. Thank you so much for, you know, I, I know I had this idea about a week ago and Dr. Delatore, you are so gracious. You guys are so hardworking in terms of always putting it together to kind of give us a sense of what you're working on, where we're going and how we're doing as we're going along. So thank you for that. I really appreciate your work tonight. Uh, that finishes off number 11. We're going on to action item 12. 
and it requires approval of the district to sunshine proposal for contract negotiations between CSEA chapter number 120. And Dr. Jason Rose is gonna take us to this point. All right, thank you, President Ryan, uh, members of the Board of Education, Superintendent De La Torre, members of cabinet, uh, student board member Trin. Uh, in accordance with the Educational Employment Relations Act, uh, the district has uh, submitted to you a proposal for the 23-24 negotiations with the California School Employees Association, Chapter 120. Uh, this year is a, is a successor, which means that both parties look to extend the term of the collecting bargaining agreement through June 30th of 2026. Uh, specifically for this year, the district has proposed looking at uh, articles that involve employment requirements, salary, health and welfare, uh, reclassification, and the work calendar. Uh, our relationship with CSEA leadership is strong at this moment and very positive, and we look forward to a productive and collaborative uh, negotiation process. Uh, it, is it is recommended that the board approve the 2324 district sunshine proposal for contract negotiations between the California School Employees Association Chapter 120 and the district. I'll make a motion for approval. Second. Thank you, Mrs. Gill, and thank you, Mr. Chang. Do I have any further discussion? If not, roll call, Mrs. Lamb. Aye. Mrs. Gill. Aye. Mrs. Sean. Aye. Mr. Chang. Aye. Mrs. Ryan, aye. Student board member, Ms. Trin? Yes. Thank you. Motion has passed. Next, proposal 2023-24 Board of Education meeting dates. Dr. Linda Delatore, our superintendent, will uh, present the dates or got it up on the screen. Thank you. Thank I you. hope everyone had a chance to look at it. It was sent to you um before tonight i hope and um are there any questions on that any discussion on any of the dates no looks good mm -hmm. yeah okay so essentially it's the second and uh fourth uh tuesday of each month other than holiday months which kind of changes a little bit in terms of it decreases our board meeting uh uh, dates to one meeting a month. All right, with that, is there any further discussion? If not, may I have a motion? I'll move to approve. This is Ms. Lamb. Thank you, Ms. Lamb. Second. Thank you, Mr. Chang. And so with that, if there's no further discussion, I will do roll call. Ms. Lamb? Aye. Ms. I'm Gill? Sorry. I'm sorry, oh. I didn't have a um, just one point of discussion. Um, okay, go ahead. For May 28th, um, if I'm not mistaken, that's the Tuesday after Memorial Day and then after actually school is out, is are we better served to have it um, the week prior or not? I mean, it's just discussion. I'm not opposed to. Mm -hmm. it, well, the week prior is, aren't all those the um, commencement, the, the grad night, all that stuff? Yeah. This year we're doing it on the 23rd, which is the week of also. Mm -hmm. So just move it up. It's pretty full. Okay. No. I, I don't have any objections. If somebody, are you? I'll this, tell you what, it's only one week okay. between the end of school and the start of summer school. So if anyone is going to take advantage of that one week. So we could look at moving it up to the 21st, right? Is that what you're suggesting? which is the Tuesday prior. So we would have the board meetings on the 7th mm -hmm. and the, the 21st. I would hesitate to do that only because of the May revise typically comes out after the 15th. Um, and that would not give us a lot of time because you have to put everything together and then um, agendize it three days before. But we would be bringing back May revise in June, right? Typically we do the first and the last meeting in June for the budget. So it's not going to make a difference. It won't make a difference for the May revise. Like this year, this year we go to the May revise on the 19th and our meeting is on the 23rd, but we're not going to bring back the May revise information on the 23rd because it doesn't give us enough time. It's not going to make a difference. So I think it won't make a difference. And um, we can we we can take the two meetings in June to satisfy the, the May revise and the budget approval. 
Right. The first meeting in June is the information item for the budget. Uh -huh. Second one, we got to get a board approved for right. compliance reasons. So we need two meetings in June for sure. Uh, the May revise is just informational. Usually it's it could be provided by, you know, just an update, a quick update. So what is the, the graduation date in, um, do you have the 23-24, Dr. Rose? It's actually calendar. What's the graduation date for after the 23? It is. I think next year's might be after It's Memorial not the 20. Um, I'm trying to find the count, our 24. calendar. Dr. Rose can pull it up. 23-24 calendar. Oh, you have it? Yeah. Um, so what is the, the Our graduation's um, May 30th. 30th. Oh, okay. So we're okay. So yeah. it's not after school. It's, it's been before Memorial Day the last couple of years, but because of okay. the way it fell, mm -hmm. I think we're finally back to having it after, which Grad Night was very happy about because now they don't lose people. Oh. <laughs> I'm so, so satisfied okay. to go to roll call. Yeah, it's fine. Thank okay, you. so you're okay with the 28th? Yep. Okay. Okay, President Ryan. Yes. We're okay. Okay, so did we have two motions? No, no, we have, no, just this original. Okay. Uh, so, yeah, yeah. I'm going to ask for the motion. Um, I, I have a motion, motion again to, to approve. As we have a motion on as is. Yeah, yeah, as is. As is. We had one. Okay. Yeah, that was uh, Miss Lamb. And then Miss yeah. Lamb and, yeah. and Mr. Kang, yeah. right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So thank you, Ms. Lamb and Mr. Chang for the motion. Uh, and so roll call, Ms. Lamb? Aye. Ms. Gill? Aye. Ms. Chong? Aye. Mr. Chang? Aye. Mrs. Ryan? Aye. And student board member, Ms. Trin? Yes. Thank you. All right. Next we have... C, uh, approval to award LPA Design Studios the project of developing facilities master plan, the FMP. Dr. Michael Lin, please. Thank you, President Ryan. Item 13C is an action item. As mentioned earlier, we had four design firms that have submitted proposals and the interview panel unanimously chose LPA to develop the district's facilities master plan. It is the recommendation of the staff to award LPA Design Studios the project of developing the facilities master plan. And I would like to call forward Rick and Darcy to uh, say a few words. Thank you for hanging in there. Yes. <laughs> so much about your district. It's been awesome. Yes, thank you, members of the board. Dr. Del Torre, we're very privileged and honored to be here tonight. And yes, um, we've been here for a couple hours now, and I think I know so much more about the district than I did when I walked in the door earlier today, so it's always a pleasure to do that. Uh, my name is Rick Musto. I'm a managing director with LPA. Our offices are in Irvine, and if you don't know anything about LPA, we're a fairly large education firm throughout the state of California. We do have an office in San Diego. Um, our larger office is in Irvine, but we also have offices in Sacramento and San Jose. And I'll let Darcy give a And I'm Darcy talk. Gumbayan. And if you want to go to that, the next, I don't know. Uh, this is our team that will be coming right alongside you guys. And we are excited to learn even more about your district. Um, and behind that team is actually many of us that will come along through the process and um, get involved very deeply and learn more. Um, if you go to the next slide. Um, so we are, we've been doing education for 28 years. Um, we done 85, even over 85 um, FMPs in the state of California. Uh, we have 125 dedicated staff within our offices in order to um, but dedicate themselves just to education. Um, actually, the team that we presented and will be working alongside you have been together for over 18 years. Actually, I'm the one who holds them down. They've all been there over two decades, um, but I'm the one who's <laughs> kind of coming up right behind them. So She's a newbie at 18 years. I'm the newbie yeah. at 18 years. <laughs> so. Yeah. Is this can, can you give an example of uh, which school district you... Oh, okay. Well, what a great introduction. <laughs> <laughs> they anticipated your question. Mr. Yeah, so yeah, we've done you know quite a few throughout the state uh, uh, facilities master plans. It's kind of hard to read, but the ones in red are the ones that are kind of in the region. Uh, we did master plans. We're actually currently working on a plan in San Gabriel. 
we did some work in, uh, as you can see, Burbank. Uh, we, I think my first facilities master plan I worked on in 2006 was with Arcadia, and that led to a, a successful bond campaign, and then we actually helped them with mm -hmm. all 10 of their schools as they moved through their, their bond program. And we were recently completed one in Temple City. We have returned to Azusa. So you can see we've kind of been all over the area, um, and we're so happy here uh, to be here tonight. So uh, we've got quite a bit of experience, and a lot of us not only do work for master plans, but we also do the actual design work and as architects and engineers and move on to do the work across um, the whole breadth of work that you would do in a school district. So you can go to the next one. And we're kind of throwing a lot of information out and obviously we're gonna open it up for some questions, but this was our very initial um, schedule that we put together. And I know it's very hard to read and I apologize. Maybe you could zoom in, yes, on the colored block. So just to give you kind of a very big picture overview, uh, the yellow that if you were to go left to right, starting in the month of May, um, the first step in doing a facilities master plan is really just kind of learning about the district, doing information gathering. We're going to kind of go to school and um, download as much information as we can, learn about your demographics and, and you know what's happening in the district. And again, what I've learned today about your pathways at the high school are great. Maybe, Those are the kinds yeah. of things that we really want to kind of get better information on. Then we go into more of an assessment phase, which is represented by the purple bar. Uh, we, we do a lot of work behind the scenes. And at that point, we're gonna um, try to schedule site visits at all the campuses and get to know and do, do some visual, op visual observation at your schools. And once we gather that information, um, that it's actually a fairly good timing because we wanna get started with um, educational visioning, which we need to engage uh, teachers, educators, district representatives, and given the fact that we know things are pretty quiet in the summertime, we're trying to orchestrate it where that will get started, you know, in the beginning of the school year. So we'll do some behind the scenes um, work in July and then going into August. And then with the hope that we can then start doing some visioning sessions and things when school commences in August. Once that is all together, then we'll move into what we call community outreach. Essentially what that is, is you can see kind of the red, or I should say the, uh, the black dots those are the actual uh, facilities master planning committee meetings. And that's the very large group that'll comprise many different types of um, members, stakeholders. And we would imagine that would start sometime, probably the latter part of August and maybe go one per month. And with the culminating that sometime in November, so we can then start to put together a draft master plan for a uh, presentation back to this board, uh, maybe in November with a final adoption in December. And this is somewhat of a or kind of a normal, um, a typical process. But what I wanna emphasize is the very next meeting we have, or I should say the first meeting with the district is really to get into the weeds and actually develop a plan that works for you because every school district's different. We said we may have been, completed 85 master plans. No two are alike. Every district has their opportunities, has their challenges, has different um, um, complexion and things. So we want to work with the district in day one to understand what really will make this successful and, and what are the what are the groups that we want to engage with? What are the key stakeholders? What are the community leaders that we want to engage with to make sure we have uh, you know, we collect as many data points as we can that will go into the plan. So even though this was kind of a, I would call this a very loose draft, and actually after we in initiate our initial meetings, we will come up with a very firm plan in terms of what all these meetings are. So uh, I went through that very fast. I did want to say that the way it does culminate in December to give the board the option, should you decide that a funding stream might, you might go after a bond perhaps in the March ballot, if not, if you want to move forward with something in September or in November, then obviously that gives you more time mm -hmm. to put the plan together and, and you know, you have all the way up until, you know, middle, say, July or even August if you want to, to um, declare a bond. So with that said, that's very quick. I know um, it's been a long night for you guys, so but we're <laughs> happy to answer any questions you have. So... Um... After uh, post uh, COVID uh, nineteen stage, uh, so for the California education architect, so is that they have some uh, favorable uh, idea, so to uh, maintain for the the, the student uh, safety issue, so is 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 that the design they go to 
the different direction right now or they still keep the transition? I, I think it's actually, it's, it's informed a little bit about how we all work. And I think it's been the same with us professionally and how we do work in our own offices where we very quickly had to adapt to remote learning or remote work. And we actually kept things going. And there are a lot of busy school districts all the way during the, the COVID years. And we we adapted to remote um, te or you know, remote um, collaboration with us. We actually did some master plans during those couple of COVID years where we would have these very large stakeholder engagement meetings remotely and we were able to do those fairly successfully so and we'd use a whiteboard and that's how we would vi uh, virtually use the dots you know that yeah uh, doctor so in terms of how it informs <laughs> education now certainly some of the things that we've learned from is just basically um, wellness in terms of um, things that you're already doing with mechanical units and things and filters and making sure that things are that you have healthy classrooms, those kinds of things. And I think from a technology standpoint, there's some lessons learned in terms of how you can integrate technology better now with um, with education. Um, I can't say there's been a major dramatic swing in terms of education from those from that process, but um, certainly there's things that have, have accelerated some of the trends that were going. If anything, things were going a certain direction, COVID kind of accelerated those into more action. Um, I have a question more for Dr. Choi, actually. Um, uh, will LPA's involvement uh, be with the HVAC that we just talked about as well, or is that separate? Choi or Lin? Oh, sorry, Dr. Lin. So I'm looking at you, but I'm saying Dr. Choi. <laughs> Dr. Lin, yeah. Um, it, it, so the HVAC units, we have 42 that are needed, oh, 42 units that are needed. And um, based on the proposals from the two vendors that we have, we're not going to be able to implement all 42. So we're going to need some additional financial um, sources to finish those 42, in addition to maybe the, the ones that in the trailers and, you know, other units, the one that Carver, that's $500,000, the one that popped and the kids had to be sent home. So that, the one that Carver is not even part of the $900,000 um, program. So there are much more massive needs. Uh, roofs are leaking. Gil knows that. Anytime it rains, it's like <laughs> the night before we're looking at the forecast. Oh, no, is it going to have a downpour? Are we going to have leaks? Um, you know, Mr. Dalsting's room is just really is looking bad. I mean, I was there just the other day um, at the middle school. Um, we have old, old um, facilities. I, I guess um, to really just um, be more straight, I was wondering if the nine hundred thousand dollar fund would would that any of that be allocated towards the LPA? Side? No, we no? can't. Okay. We can't do that because that that nine hundred thousand is restricted. It's uh, already in planned form, submitted and approved uh, by the state. Um, we cannot change it at this point. Um, if we try to, and let's say we're able to, we're not going to make that deadline. Thank you. Um, I had a question. I think uh, LPA has worked with San Marino Unified in the past. Um, yes. Can yes. you speak a little bit to some of the work you did with San Marino in the past? We, um, I, I can't speak to the whole history, but I think that the probably the, the most recent thing we did is we worked with the gym at Huntington Middle School. So that was a project that LPA were the designers for. Mm -hmm. And I think that was probably... That's the only thing I can think of that we did. And that was around 2015 ish, and actually um, one of the representatives that pictures um, uh, she was an architect that was actually involved in that project. So she's mm -hmm. going to be project assistant manager here too. Is the Nicole same Meta, project yeah. Manager, so. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so that was the last project that I believe we. Worked yeah, we with worked on. on the middle school. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Any other questions? Okay, President Ryan. Well, if there are no other questions, um, thank you so much, but I need a, a motion. This is an action item, correct? Yep. Yes. Okay. Uh, before we make a motion, I just wanted to speak to this, the need that we have for the facility master plan. Um, I think there might be potentially criticism to spend the money. Um, like, oh, no, you don't need that. We've already done it. Just pull up something from the past. Um, no, that's not really how you build things at last. <laughs> so 
Um, I, I want to thank Dr. Lin because I think he was able to secure some uh, cost savings in this particular uh, FMP project um, contract. So uh, this is not something we were ever able to do before. When we went out for a bond previously, we did not have the money to engage in a full facilities master plan. And I think we saw some of the impact of not having that mm -hmm. on um, people being unsure of what exactly they were funding. And so I appreciate the work that went into this and thank you LPA. You came very highly, highly, highly regarded by the selection committee for your ability to really customize your proposal to us. Thank you very much. Thank you. With that, I would move to approve uh, the contract with LPA. Is that Mrs. Lamb? Uh, Mrs. Chan. Mrs. Chan? Do I have a second? Second. Thank you, Mr. Chang. So Mrs. Chang and Mr. Chang, with, is there any further discussion with the motions? Okay. Let's do roll call, Mrs. Lamb? Aye. Mrs. Gill? Mrs. Sean? Aye. Mr. Chang? Aye. Mrs. Ryan, aye. Student board member to Ms. Ms. Trin? She's left the room. Oh, <laughs> she's left? Yes, left the building. Yes. <laughs> Good for her. She's finally getting some rest, maybe an extra 20 minutes of sleep. That girl. <laughs> anyway, so proud of her. And uh, with that, uh, the motion has passed. All right. Um, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. That was LPA. And next up on 13 is board superintendent discussion items. Dr. Delatory. Uh, I have none this evening except to express my sincere uh, appreciation for the Board of Education's hard work. Um, this year, and especially in the month of May, when I know you're very busy attending a variety of different uh, school functions and events. So uh, thank you so much for being present and um, participating in all of the work that we are doing moving forward. So thank you. All right. And so with that, uh, Mr. Chang, will you hit the gavel, please? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Her gavel. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Thank you.